Today, I have 13 spring and summer wreaths and swags for your viewing pleasure. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. So we're gonna start off with some pipe cleaners, some burlap. We're also gonna need deco mesh that is not seen here. You're gonna need a variety of ribbons, at least three different kinds. Preferably wired, but if not, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. And I'm going to use some jute. This is an 18 inch Dollar Tree wreath. I got mine at the thrift store. We're gonna start off by putting down our chenille stems. So, I am going to, I started off without uh, turning on the camera, so I took them off and I'm gonna show you again. We're gonna go around the middle bar and the center ring. This way it doesn't slide around. You can see what I'm doing here under, kind of making an X over it. Gonna twist it just a few times. And you're gonna go all the way around your wreath doing this to every one of those little crossbars. Very easy. This is what we're gonna use to attach our ribbons and our deco mesh down to this wreath. It's kind of a combo wreath. I wanted to do something a little bit different and I love the way it turned out. So I hope you'll keep watching. Okay, now we're gonna loop over the inner ring and the outside ring and put a little twist in there to hold it still. Now it can still move between, it can kind of slide up and down there, but that's not gonna be a problem once you get your poofs on. And you'll see what I mean shortly. If it bothers you that they're moving around, you can use a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place. No problem at all. Continue around like this until you get every little section with a stem, a chenille stem, a pipe cleaner on the outside. So you are going to end up, when you are finished, with 16 of these little ties. All the way around. All right, so I've got some scraps of deco mesh and wonderful miracles happen every day. Proof will be shown to you in a moment. So this is 20 inches. I thought I would have enough to go around this entire wreath. However, I do not. And I find that out once I get toward the end of the roll and not the end of the wreath. So, not a problem though, not a problem. I'm going to place down a section of that after I've gathered it up. I'm gonna press it firmly into the center of one of those middle wires, just like that, and then just push it through to the back. Now I'm gonna use my ruler to show you. Uh, most of the time when I'm doing this off camera, I just kind of guess. I don't really measure it every single time, but it's completely up to you for demonstration purposes and to show you I'm going to be measuring it just so you know what we're doing. So I think I took a 10 inch poof there. I'm gonna show you the measurements here. Yep, 10 inches and I'm just gonna make a poof in the inside, then I'm gonna go to the outside. Then we'll go back to the inside, and then after that one's done, we'll go to the outside. We're just gonna follow it all the way around. It's sort of a little back and forth motion. 10 inches, I'm measuring it, and I'm just going to twist it around. And those little extras, you can just cut those off. They're not gonna be, sometimes with deco mesh, they'll come, like they'll pull loose, and I noticed that with Dollar Tree mesh, that happens a lot. This mesh that I'm working with today actually came from the thrift store. And the burlap ribbon that I use came originally from Walmart. I got it on clearance at Walmart years ago. And I've just held on to it, as craft, you know crafters often do. We hang on to things. So I thought, oh, you know what? I've got some blue over there. So let's, let's just add some blue and we'll make this kind of, you know, kind of like you would have an American flag. Most of it is red and white and then you have a section of it that's blue. So I thought we'll give it a try. So this was sort of an experiment. I'm going to untwist my little tie here and holding everything together, place that blue in, put the little frayed tail from the edge up underneath there with the other one and then tightly twist it down. You can see my freckles and I have a little bit of a sunburn. I was at a family reunion this weekend, had a blast. I know I have some family members who watch my videos and I had so much fun. I just had so much fun. So if you're watching today, I miss y'all. I love y'all. We have to do it again soon. Okay, 
So this deco mesh is smaller than the other one. I think the other one's 20 inches. This is like a 10 inch deco mesh. So it's thinner. I'm going to use the same size poofs, but I'm going to go over it twice to give it more bulk. So you'll see what I mean. Same process. We're going to go to the inner ring, then the outside, then the inner, then the outside, until we get all the way back to where we, um, to where the red and white stop over there. So you'll see here. I just wanted to leave all this in because some people really need to see it all. So I'm leaving it in for you. And I'm going to get back to the end and I'm going to twist it. Now rather than cutting it off, we're going to double it back over on itself. And we're going to do 10 inches again and that's going to give us about 20 inches like the other one and we should have approximately the same coverage. So I'm just going back over. So you made another little poof and I'm just going to go back over right where we came from in the same pattern and place that back down. And you can see the difference in the poof on the left and the poofs on the right. You get a lot more coverage there and I really like the look of this. So that might be something for you to think about. If you get your deco mesh uh, at Dollar Tree, you know, maybe double it up. If you get it at the thrift store but you know it's a remnant and you don't know if you'll have enough, you know, go ahead and patch things together. This is one of those little happy accidents that, you know, the great Mr. Bob told us about a long time ago. Happy little accidents, like the little happy trees. And it's worked out perfectly. All right, at this point, you're probably gonna look at your wreath and go, what in the heck? This looks terrible, it looks sad. Don't be discouraged, do not worry. Believe that this is going to get better, because it does. It's just kind of thin right now, kind of thin, kind of sparse, a little sad, but it's gonna look better. So start fluffing out your poofs a little bit and you can see you got more coverage, right? It looks a little bit better as you go along, fluffing everything out. And then we're gonna be adding layers onto it. We're gonna put burlap on it. We're gonna put little ribbon stacks in there. We're gonna add a bow to it. It's, she's gonna look fabulous shortly. Give her some, give her some time, she's gonna look fabulous. So you see I've got my blue. I wanna keep that sort of on the top and on the left and then the rest of that red and white is going to be on the right. So now we're gonna start with this burlap. I'm gonna take a section of it, that's about, I don't know, an inch or two, bundle it up in my hands, and then loop it over. Same thing, 10 inch little poofs here. Gather it in your fingers, poof it up. Now for me, at some point here while I'm filming, I stop measuring because a little thing you could know once you get to this point and you've got your base down with your deco mesh, that burlap that goes on top, you're just going to be laying it right down on top of that other poof. So you, the measurements are exactly like, like what's underneath it, essentially. You know, make sure that that little covering just lightly sits on top of the, the base that is under there, the deco mesh. If you do that and you can stop using the ruler, this process will go on a lot quicker. Although I have to say, this is not really the most lengthy part. It's usually the cutting all of the little strips of ribbon to make your little um, ribbon stacks that take the most time, for me anyway, and all that dovetailing, you know? All those little special details that make it look so great in the end, that's the part that takes me the most time. And I don't show you all of that. Okay, so we're back to the beginning where we put that first little section of burlap down. You're just gonna cut off enough that you can tuck it under and right through the frame. Now you can start to pull your burlap and your deco mesh poofs apart. So they're back and forth, kind of crisscrossed over each other. So you wanna pull the burlap to one side and the deco mesh to the other side, back and forth. So deco mesh, burlap, Burlap, deco mesh, back and forth, back and forth. You see that? It almost looks like the burlap is kind of threaded through the deco mesh. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? And just by pulling those apart, look how much fuller the wreath is already. Look how much better that looks already. Yep. Okay, so now start on the little stacks of ribbons here. This is thrifted ribbon. Surely you can get something like this at Michael's, but you know, Dollar Tree, I'm gonna tell you, I was in there recently 
They have some beautiful 4th of July and patriotic ribbons that are burlap with stars. And I think there was one with trucks and fireworks. Um, I don't have those yet. I'm just using up what I've got. But I will be getting some more goodies because I love decorating for the patriotic holidays. So we're cutting them in 10 inches and we're going to dovetail the ends. And I'm going to do the same thing with the red and white. And this beautiful fabric trim that I found. I found it at Goodwill. We're going to make it stiffer or we're going to make it wired, I guess we could say, by just doubling it over on top of some of this Dollar Tree burlap. This is such a simple process. I'm just, and this is just cotton that's on top, but isn't this a beautiful ribbon? All right, so I'm going to start off by just cleaning off the end of my glue gun here. And then I'm going to do zigzags and lines right in the center. Because it's the thickest part, it's not going to stick to the table. It's not going to make a mess and burn me. So I'm just going to focus mainly in the middle of that ribbon where the lace is sewn on the other side. You can certainly do this with the lace side up. I just didn't do it that way, but you can if you want to. And then pat it down, rub it, and then you can start cutting off your sections. This one we're going to cut it 9 inches. We're going to cut this one a little bit shorter. And then it's going to get dovetailed as well. So you're going to have 16 of each ribbon that you choose to use. 16. You see now we have like a wired ribbon. Perfect. Perfect. I love doing this. Continue along just like this until you get the right amount of each of your ribbons. And then... Here are my three patterns. I'll show you how we're going to stack them. We're going to make an X with the two 10 inch ribbons in the back and the nine inch ribbon is going to go right in the middle. Just like that. You can use all 10 inches if you want to, but because this was a fabric bow that's a little floppier, even with the, you know, the other ribbon underneath it, I just thought that I would use it this way and it helps me save that ribbon so I have enough for a bow in the end. Pinch it together, you can use clips and do them all at once, or you can do it one at a time. And just open up where you have your little twist ties. Be I mean, not the twist ties, the pipe cleaners. Be sure you use full length pipe cleaners too. Don't cut these in half, you will not have enough because these are very bulky. This wreath is bulky, and we're gonna be adding a lot of things to it, so leave those whole. Then you're just gonna place it down Twist it tightly so that it holds in the center of the little poofs between the poofs and then spread those ribbons apart. Here's another one. We're going to layer them across like this. Walk your fingers toward each other, kind of an accordion pleat in the middle. Hold on to it. Open up the little Chanel stem or your pipe cleaner, whatever you want to call it, and twist it. You could certainly use floral wire, you know, if you had to. If that was your only option, you could use that. You just have to be careful because you will poke your fingers with that stuff. And it's easier to find these Chanel stems down in the fabric and the burlap and the, you know, whatever you're using as your base than to use those skinny, thin little wires. And besides, these are cheap and you can get them at Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square. You can get a big package. So you can see how I fan those out. Make sure that you have your ribbons flipped over in the right direction once you get them down and you begin to fluff. At this point, it's not necessary for you to fluff if you don't want to fluff, but I do this throughout my entire process while I am making my wreaths. I pull them apart, I fluff them out, I check out the placement and seeing if they're slipping around on the, the wreath form underneath. You can add a little glue if you need to. If you pull anything loose, you can fix that. I like it. I like the way the ribbon feels, the mesh feels, so I don't mind it. Be sure you follow me on my social media. I would love to see you there. Continuing around, all the way around. Now we're into the blue. We've overlapped our red and white. And now we're on to our blue section where the stars would normally be. Continue around. I don't want to bore y'all, but I want you to see what I'm doing. Because it is questionable when you start on a wreath sometimes. It does not start off beautiful. But it usually ends up that way. So we're down to the last little bundle. And I'm pushing it down and twisting it around. 
and then pulling those apart. You see, you pull them apart, fix your tails, flip them down and spread them out. And that is so much better. At this point, I'm not gonna add anything extra into the center of these. So I'm going to take my wire cutters and I'm gonna trim off all of my extra pipe cleaners. If you would like to, you can give it just one last final twist for good measure and then cut off what you don't need or you can poke what you don't need back through the wreath into the bottom. Totally up to you. See, here I go again, fluffing everything out, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, y'all may, may be tired of watching me fluff all this stuff, but it makes a huge difference in the end. You don't want anything to look like you pulled it straight out of a box. No, you want it to be fluffed, you want it to be pretty, you want to have a representation, uh, representation of all of your colors. See how just flipping them out, just curving those tails under, pulling those out. Look how much more full that wreath is. Now, this wreath would be fine by itself once it's all fluffed out and pretty. I think it would be beautiful by itself with nothing else added to it. You could add some little wooden stars. You can maybe paint them if you like a little Americana look. You know, add some little wood pieces in there if you would like. But this is how it looks, nice and fluffed love this I really like it but if we want to add extra there's always little thrifted pieces like this little sign here I have a star that could go metal star could go in the middle there are signs from Dollar Tree you could certainly put on there that would be beautiful they have gorgeous 4th of July things these were from Target dollar spot and I got these at the thrift store I recognize the tag and then you could put these on anywhere you wanted. You could put a variety and you could put all that stuff on there if you wanted to. But I really like the color of this one. It's got kind of a creamy white background and it looks more of like an Americana or rustic look. So that's what I'm gonna go with. And I have just a little bit of this beautiful trim left and I'm just gonna make like a shoelace bow. With this one, I'm not gonna bother putting any backing on it at this point because I don't mind if it's a little bit floppy. This is so beautiful. I love finding ribbons at the thrift store because they're so different. And they're definitely um, lots of vintage ribbons that I have found and used in projects that I love. This is our wired ribbon. This is a very easy bow to do here. You saw how I did that. I don't need to tell you how to do that one, but if you have problems with bows, I do have a um, bow tutorial video with lots of different options for you. So maybe if you don't like this type of bow, you want something more full or bigger or with shorter tails or whatever, you can check that video out. I'll have it linked in the description box below as well as any other links that I mentioned. You can find my Pinterest there. I've got lots and lots of free printables and helpful Cricut information and sublimation things. You could go over there and check that out. That's all linked. Now I'm just going to put these bows together by using that same piece of red jute to tie them down. And I decided that I needed to add some of the red and white checked ribbon that we used on our bundles just to keep it consistent all the way throughout. And I'm going to make that bow just a little bit smaller. The same way we made the other wired ribbon because this one is wired. And then I'm going to struggle to tie it just like you see me doing here. By the way, did y'all notice I did my nails? I did. I had them fixed up for my family reunion. Did my toes and I did my fingers. And it looks weird to me because I'm not used to looking at my hands like that. It's almost like I'm watching somebody else do it. It's strange. Polish is probably coming off soon. Okay, now you can decide where you want to put your bow. The top, the side, the bottom, wherever you would like. But I thought it would be pretty right at the bottom of the blue section of this pretty wreath. So I'm just going to push the... Um, the jute through the wreath, put it onto the form, and then tie it down. If you tie it down really tight, it's going to sink your bow down into the frame. So if you're not looking to sink it down in there and you want it to be on top, be sure you don't pull it too tightly when you tie it on. And then it will kind of just rest in there with the rest of the fabric and the ribbons. And you can trim off what's left. My bow's all crushed. It's going to be, you know how this works start fluffing. Y'all know the process by now. Fluff it up. 
start pulling those wired ribbons really kind of make them do what you want them to do if you have your ribbon that's not wired in between wired ribbon it helps to hold it in place I'm just adjusting the size there of my metal bow it's not glued so it slides pretty easy for me when I want it to but it stays in place though and then decide what you want to do with your tails do you want to dovetail them do you want to cut them at slants would you like for your bow to have short tails or long tails they can be equal or you can cut them at different lengths and I thought maybe doing it at different lengths would be pretty it kind of reminds me of you know fireworks how they pop in the sky and you have the bulk of the firework in one place and then you have the little sparklers that come down I thought that would be kind of a good thing to do with my tails so that's what I did that's kind of what I was thinking of how I was inspired when I did the tails get them how you like them and then I'm going to put this little sign right underneath it and it's pretty easy to do it's already got a string on the back so I'm just going to take a pipe cleaner and twist it down it tightens up that string that is there on the back of the sign so that you won't see it and it gives you something that you can attach that to without using any hot glue so I'll just feed that through like I did the bow cinch it down but not too tight you don't want it to squish anything I'm gonna fix my bow how I want it and just kind of arrange it around the sign and then um, the sign needs any little extra hot glue or any more um, security that can be done at this point and I just use a little bit I love this wreath a little bit on my base and then hold it in place and let it dry I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this beautiful wreath I've got more um, patriotic decor coming so the next one we're gonna do is going to be using this embroidery hoop and then I have some of this cream colored burlap and it's just a thick roll and it is from burlapfabric.com I'm just gonna trim this off and I'm going to fit it down in this embroidery hoop this is easy to use if you've ever used an embroidery hoop you just use the little screw and the little hardware on the side to loosen it and tighten it and then it stretches that fabric that's on the inside nice and flat and there we go not hard to do if you have any problems with your fabric kind of wrinkling just flip it over and pull on it a little bit from the sides and it'll go down in place just like it needs to be all right once that is done and I feel like it is secure I'm gonna trim off all of that extra on the sides now I'll start off using little scissors because I thought that would be better since I have to get so close but my scissors just were not behaving themselves follow me on my social media Pinterest and Instagram so I got out my new scissors and I'm just taking those and going around the edge and they cut very nicely now I'm going slowly because I don't want to cut the wood but yeah they cut very nicely so now we're going to start on the floral part and I'm just going to use some of these pretty pink flowers that I got from the thrift store and all of this greenery is from the thrift store they're part of some I think bouquets that probably came from a high-end store because these are in very good condition and I just cut them apart and I'm just going to piece these together and I've added some greenery and these beautiful little wine colored they look I don't know, they mm, I don't think they're roses but they're very pretty and they look nice with this bundle I think the color combination is pretty I'm going to use my zip ties here because we want to make sure that all of those little end pieces even the little short end pieces stay together so it's almost like we're making the base of a swag and like I said the little ends are short so we're going to have to do it in two places instead of in the center so that it reaches all of them just cut off your excess and then you can work on the bundle of your bouquet just a little bit this will very easily fit through the weave and then wrap around the arrangement and around the base so that's what I've done there and I'm just gonna clip it off I'm using this thinner ribbon now which is the same color almost but the weave is a little bit tighter than what we used in the embroidery hoop and I'm just going to make a loop and the first one is going to be eight inches and I'm going to do this four times that's going to give us four 
little pieces on each end or four loops on each end of the bow that I'm making and I know you cannot see it here and I apologize for that but you get the gist you see that and then I'm just going to find my center and pinch it together this is a it's not a thick ribbon but it's kind of stiff so you can see that it holds its form and I love that it's not something I'm used to to uh, dealing with with ribbons they're usually so soft they just lose their shape but these these work great so then you know how you do a bow you're gonna start fluffing and there's gonna be four on one side of the knot four on the other side of the knot and then you're going to have your little tails that are left there and you can just trim those tails if you want to whichever way you like to do it keep fluffing it out you could use a different color if you wanted to for this or you could use a wired ribbon if you wanted to I want to add another bow in the center of this it's the same kind of bow but this time I only did it two times back and forth and I used a five inch piece instead of an eight inch piece I just laid it right on the top tied it wrapped it around tied it in the back so it's a nice knot so that when we're pulling it out it stays look how nicely it stands up there that's really nice for a ribbon that doesn't have any wire so you see the little ornament up there that says blossom that came from Dollar Tree I think it looks really nice with what we have going on in the bottom and it's a nice little sign to put on the top you know you don't have to have a Cricut if you want to use something with words on it or something that's really pretty just to adorn your arrangements or your signs whatever you got going on think outside the box so now I'm going to take two pieces that are about 19 inches long and I'm going to make tails I'm just going to overlap them pinch them in the middle and push them into a V you can see how I did that there I'm going to add some hot glue and I've already got the bow glued down and I'm going to add the hot glue and glue the tail down watch your fingers so you don't burn yourself be very careful and I decided I want to put a loop in the middle so I'm just going to take this little short piece of ribbon it's about three inches long fold it over on itself with some hot glue to make a ring and then once it's cooled off a little hot glue in the middle and that'll finish off that bow now to attach this I could have laid this down when I laid down that wide ribbon that's inside the embroidery hoop and just push this string through the frame but this was an afterthought so just go ahead and wrap it around the back and then I put a little bit right across the top just to hold the string so that this doesn't try to rock back and forth I'm not gonna secure it down on the ribbon though I'm gonna leave it like it is and if it's hung up nicely and securely it won't move so I decided to add just a little more of that same greenery right underneath the bow so that you can see it a little bit better and just to add a little more height to this project so it doesn't look so you know side to side squatty this elongated it just a bit then you can just take those tails you can keep cut them at a shorter length you can leave them long you could do two different lengths you can dovetail them you can cut them. here's our beautiful burlap wreath or hanger right whichever now, you want to call it I'm gonna use some nautical rope both the little the soft one and then the rough one that's brown I'm gonna use some of this meshy ribbon some netting some of these pieces of sea glass a willow pick and this gorgeous salty and happy seahorse sign from Dollar Tree and here is a placemat it is like a wicker kind of placemat I got it at Goodwill we're going to start by removing the hanger on the seahorse putting a piece of tape right over the back side and then we're going to use a little bit of this spackling from Dollar Tree to just fill in that hole very simple easy to do whatever's left you can put right back in the little jar all right I want to know I already know that I want this to be dimensional so I'm going to use these little blocks these building blocks from Dollar Tree and I'm going to put these on the back and this is going to allow us something to glue it down to but still have some rooms so that we can tuck little goodies along the way as we decorate this beautiful wreath 
So once we get the blocks down, we're going to put some glue on them and place it down on the mat. This is a square place mat, and I decided that the diamond shape would be exactly what would be fitting for this beautiful little salty and happy sign. So here's some options for you. You can just use the cotton type nautical rope if you wanted to, or you could layer it with a little bit of this rougher, it's more like jute, rough rope around the outside or you could just use one or the other. Or a little idea is you could twist these together like I'm gonna do. It's easy enough. You're gonna take those little tape sections. They are taped on the ends. I'm gonna use clamps to help me hold it in place until my glue is dried. And then I'm just going to begin twisting these ropes together. Trying to keep in mind as I'm twisting to make sure that the distance between them is equal meaning that the size of the twist is about the same for every twist. That's easy to do, right? You can use clamps along the way to help you hold them down if you would like. Now I'm just gonna tighten it up a little bit and go ahead and glue this down on the corner bottom of the placemat. It's gonna hold it in place here and then any place that it is going to be touching the mat, I just roll it up a little, add some glue, and then roll it right back down and hold it on there. I'm using Gorilla Glue for all of the projects today. I'm going to continue around in any place that it is going to be touching to add the glue. And then we're going to do the same thing into the corners. If you need clamps to help you hold things in place, go ahead and grab some clamps and you can definitely get metal or plastic clamps at Dollar Tree. And of course, uh, I use Dollar Tree items, but I'm not sponsored by Dollar Tree in any way. I just like to give you beautiful decor on a budget and going to Dollar Tree and getting thrift items is the way to do it. And it brings me joy to share these things with you. So I hope that it brings you some joy Okay, once we're all the way back to the beginning starting place, I'm going to use some clear tape and I'm going to wrap it around my rope. I'm gonna do this to both of these because we need to trim them and I don't want them to fray. So doing it this way keeps them nice and tight on the ends. I'm just going to use my little cutters here to cut this off. You can certainly use scissors, but it's awful thick and I don't wanna ruin my scissors. I'm going to glue those two right back together. And yours may or may not look like this. Depends on the size of the placemat you use, obviously. But trim it down to where you need to trim it. I'm gonna do the same thing with this brown rope. I'm going to cut it and get it on both sides and then twist it around to the back. It's gonna overlap where the other two are joined. And I'm gonna use a good amount of hot glue here to hold this in place. You can clamp it until it is perfectly in place if you would like. Now just to make sure that I have it on here snugly, I'm gonna you know use the back side and I'm gonna take my little glue gun and go right around the jointing between the wood and the rope to make sure this doesn't go anywhere. So now I want to do a little something with the seahorse. Um, we're going to make this a girl seahorse. And it already came with the little, the little metal star here. So I'm going to add that back, but in a little bit different of a position. And then I'm going to layer it with one of these little starfish that comes in a three pack from Dollar Tree. And I think this is called the Shoreline, maybe. Um, it's that product line at Dollar Tree. They have got some beautiful things. I'm going to use this willow pick and cut it down. This comes in a variety of colors. So if you chose to use a different sign besides the seahorse, you can certainly get something to coordinate. I think there's a big variety um, at most stores right now. Love this meshy ribbon. I don't know what that stuff is, um, but wow, it really looks like coral. All right, now I always like to do a dry run. Y'all know this. I like to place things down before I glue them. I don't want to make them permanent until I'm sure. So I just kind of toy around with the placement. I was able to cut this pick into five pieces. And one piece I'm going to trim down and make into a shorter piece so that we have six pieces. 
I'm gonna make some little ribbon bunches here or uh, mesh. I guess we could, we could probably just call this mesh, right? So I'm gonna take this mesh, bundle it up about an inch from the bottom, and I'm gonna take some of my jute and tie it off. I'm gonna use a double knot, and this way it doesn't slip. And I'm just gonna take sections of this mesh to make little, mm, maybe to kind of mimic seaweed or coral. You'll see in just a minute. So I'm gonna measure off about 10 inches. I'm gonna grab my ruler here for you. And it's about 10 inches, but you can do yours longer or shorter. If you get it too long though, it's gonna kind of flop away and you don't want that to happen. You want it to stay close to your project that you're working on. I'm gonna take another piece of that jute. And you know, if you're the kind of person like me who saves everything, this would be a great time to go into that stash where you've removed all those little uh, jute hangers from your Dollar Tree items in the past. Pull that pile out and use those on this project. How about that? That'll save you even more money. So I'm just going to continue to do this until I get four different segments. Once I get the knot in both little ends, I'm going to cut underneath and leave about, you know, an inch on the bottom of it and then trim down my jute so that I have doubled sections. So now I have the beige underneath and the white on top. You can layer any colors that you like. I think there is a white, a cream, a beige, brown, and green. Those are the ones I've found so far, but feel free in the comments to let me know if you found any other colors besides those. Help us all out. And of course, different stores have different, you know, supplies and, and different things, so it kind of varies. If you have the opportunity to go to more than one Dollar Tree, you might want to do that when you are hunting for your goodies to make your projects. Mmm, coffee. Okay, so there are our five pieces. And I think I want them to lay down here. So you can either start by gluing right down on your placemat. And if you're gonna use a regular, if you're looking for a placemat, you don't find one that's thrifted, you're going to need to buy one that is sturdy enough that you can hang it on the wall. Sturdy enough that you can glue things to it and it's not gonna flop around. So getting something like wicker or wood is a really good option. Something with some thickness, I guess you could say. So now I'm just going to either glue onto the, the placemat and then lay it down, or I'm gonna put a little bit on the pick and lay it down. You can do it either way. Be sure you protect your fingers if you're going to choose to do it this way, just to make sure that you don't hurt yourself. I don't want anybody having accidents when you're supposed to be enjoying the projects. Okay, so I like this so far. It looks good. It definitely looks like plant life in the ocean. So I'm just gonna take my little wire cutters and trim these down. And now we have two smaller ones. I can make it even on both sides. You don't have to though. And you could certainly use more picks than just the ones, you know, just the one that I use. And you can use a bunch of different colors and really make it look tropical and gorgeous because we all know that the ocean life is beautiful and colorful. So now I'm gonna start working with these little pieces of mesh. You can twist it like that, kind of give it that seaweed look if you wanted to, or you can just kind of make it look wavy in there. And I know that I want to have mine open up like this, so I'm going to stretch it out just enough that I know I'll be able to show both the beige underneath or the cream underneath and the white on top. It's just going to give more dimension to our project instead of it just being something that's flat like a sign. I really want this to be like a wreath. So I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue and I'm gonna take a stick, just a little, um, you know, I get all kinds of stuff like this at Goodwill, so it's just a scrap of some sort and poke it in there. It's gonna go under there because we raised it up off the placemat and now we have the little gaps that we can tuck things under, which really brings it more to life. I know crafters use the term dimension a lot, but it really does. It gives you shadows, it gives that extra interest, and it gives you more space to work in so that your otherwise flat project, flat projects can be lifted up. And I think it looks really nice. 
hey, if you wanted to, you could even take some Dollar Tree string lights and go underneath the seahorse, and that would light it up. Wouldn't that be pretty? We're going to be working on some more lighted projects shortly, though, so hang in there. All right, so I'm going to continue along and just tuck these back and forth where I want them, add hot glue where I want them, and so that they will stay in place. And I like the look that maybe he's kind of hiding in the coral. Maybe he's finding some protection in there. Seahorses are little, little guys, so, you know, we want to make sure that they feel safe in their home. All right, now I'm just going to pull these down a little bit, kind of have them hanging off just a bit. I like the look of it. It's cute like that, I think. But you do it any way that you like. So I've got this little bag. Now, these little twisty things, uh, along with some other stuff, it's like a table scatter. And I believe it came originally from the at-home store. But I got it at Goodwill and put it all in a plastic bag. So I have these to use on all my projects. And these quite nicely pull apart. And they, they're, they're short and shrunk down and then you can pull them carefully and they kind of unwind a little bit. This is really cool. Now some other options for you to make little puffs of coral or little wispy pieces is to cut a couple of sections and then rather than dovetail them, you want to cut them in the opposite direction so that they're kind of rounded instead of having a little uh, like a V cut in it, you're going to round it out instead. Fold it in half, bunch it up, add some glue, protect your fingers of course, and then hold it in place. Give it just a minute to dry and then you can lift your finger up and it'll stay right there. All of these little extra pieces just give it more dimension, they give you something more to look at, they give your eye something else to wonder over. And I love that about crafting because we can make things our own. I'm going to continue to tuck around here and there. Now I've got the beige. Some pieces are going to be doubled. Some are going to be single. It's going to give us a nice variety. Recently, I got a comment from a, um, somebody who was watching that says I talk too much. So that's interesting. Um, and I do apologize if anybody thinks that I talk too much. I like to communicate with my viewers and subscribers and have had so many people say that they appreciate that about me. So I'm going to keep doing what I do here because I'm always going to try to stay true to myself but give you guys what you want. So continuing along, I've added an eyeball. There was two little circles. Um, this is the eyeball. There were two of these little marbles in that bag of sea glass which was awesome because I didn't know they would be there and it makes the perfect little eye. I just decided that maybe she needed a little something else up there on her head so we're gonna give a little I think that makes it perfect look at that there's a shell that used to be an ornament it's kind of iridescent I've added that and that little poof back there I think that looks pretty now I'm gonna take the sea glass that in the colors that I like which is the white and the kind of that seafoam green color and I'm going to add those in there just kind of lay them around those little wicker balls which by the way came from Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue these pieces in here and there and then I'm going to add in these little cone looking things look like cornucopias I don't want everything to be matchy matchy on both sides I want it to be kind of wild and random and just add those down you know this one's hanging over the edge a little bit and I like that and then I found just these were in somebody's Christmas uh, like Christmas ornaments they were um, these and a bunch of other little Christmas things I think at Goodwill and so I picked up all of these because I thought these are perfect for little bubbles don't they look good for bubbles I did a mermaid wreath and I used um, some little ornaments that were similar to this. Um, I will try to link that mermaid wreath. It was from, I believe last year, maybe the year before. It is really pretty. And if you like this kind of beachy or, you know, ocean type of thing, I think you'll really love that little wreath. And they do look like bubbles to me. Again, more dimension. Then you got the shininess from the little pearly bubbles. 
And you know the pearls? Pearls are in the ocean, right? I think it's perfect for that. But you do you. Do what you want. You can also get the little table scatter that's like in silver and white and blue and white. And you could use something like that on there. And that would look nice. I'm just continuing to look at this piece from all sides, all directions, and add in wherever I feel like I want to add something in. I'm going to add some more glass down here on the tail, and just tuck those pieces around. And one more little poof underneath the end, and glue it down. Not bad, not bad. Now we're going to make a hanger. This is very simple, I've got about eight inches of jute here, recycled jute. I'm just going to tie a knot, pull the knot down tightly, and then we have a hanger. I'm going to put it in the top tip and then use some of my glue. I put the glue under it. I'm going to add glue over it as well and then a little piece of scrap cardboard right on top. And this is this beautiful little seahorse wreath. Oh, she's gorgeous. She's just stunning. All right, now we're going to move on to the next one, and we're going to make a beautiful wreath in a basket. So here is some ribbon that I got on clearance. This one came from the thrift store, and I'm liking the grays and whites right now. I have some thrifted lavender, and this cute little canvas that came from Dollar Tree. So be sure you pick one of these up. Very cute. And I like that it's got that gray in there. It's gonna look really cute with this, I think. So I'm just giving you an idea of the size so you know what to look for. I'm gonna use some of the pipe cleaners and some zip ties, and I have a flat basket that I've used in another arrangement. Some greenery that I have, just leftover bits and pieces and a piece of foil foam. What we need to do is make sure that our floral foam, foam is secured down to this basket. And because I want to be able to use this basket again for other projects, as I've already used it in several projects, I don't want to use hot glue here. And the weave of the basket is big enough that we can put a pipe cleaner through it. So I'm going to use the pipe cleaner and put it through the holes that I've made in the foam, feed it through the back of the foam, through the bottom of the basket, back up and then secure it down on each side. This is going to keep this thing in place nicely. I picked it up after I had it all attached and shook it really well and it stayed right where it needed to stay. So that was perfect. If you don't want to use your basket for, you know, another wreath maybe later on or another project then you can go ahead and just glue your foam down if that's what you want to do you could also use pipe cleaners here if you don't have zip ties my zip ties come from dollar tree and so do the pipe cleaners so hopefully you can find one or the other in your store the prices now are dollar 25 in my area um, where they were my stores were a little bit slower changing their prices uh, i think than other places according to the videos that i had seen but yeah, it's finally happened. Not sure how I feel about it yet. All right, I'm gonna use my staple gun with really short staples just to attach these onto the backs of the sign and I'm stapling it into the canvas there and into the little, there's like a board underneath there that the staples go into. And that way I don't poke a hole through anything. And I'm just gonna give it a few twists so that it doesn't fall out because it's not really tight. And then I'm gonna feed those pipe cleaners through the basket. I'm just trying to, I know that I want this sign far down, pretty far down, because the bulk of my arrangement is gonna be above the sign. We will have some going on below the sign, but mainly above the sign. So once I get those where I like them, I'm going to twist them around so they don't fall off, and then just trim those off. And poke your little extra wires down into the basket. That way you don't scratch your wall or your door or wherever you intend to hang this. All right. And by all means, if you can't find the farmer's market sign, any sign that you find, you can, you can do the same thing. And if you don't have lavender, you can use any picks that you like. So I love these. I got these at the thrift store. And I know that I wanted to use those in an arrangement by themselves. I just 
I don't mix lavender with other things. I like to use them by themselves in a project, you know, let them be center stage. So I'm trimming off what I don't need. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the little grass here that I have. And the grass is kind of a frosted looking grass as well. They were in bigger picks and I just cut them apart. I want this to look kind of fanned out. So I'm taking these pieces and fanning those out or sticking those in that, almost like sun rays into that floral foam. So you remember when we were kids and we, and we drew the sun and we had the rays poking out around the sides? Well, that's kind of the idea here. Now you can see here how this is, and this came from the thrift store. You can do this with lots of bundles and bouquets that you get. Just pull them down and apart. You can see where they attach and cut them off. If you cut them off too far, far up, then you'll get individual little pieces of grass rather than bundles of grass. And I, I want it to be thick and bundled. Otherwise, I don't believe you could just stick that plastic in there anyway. So you have to do it this way. So the same process we used up top, I'm gonna to use here on the bottom. And the length of the grass is the same on both of them. I like this hanging down. I don't wanna cut it off, but you can certainly trim yours if you would like. Now I'm just gonna take these picks and kind of arrange them. And then on the outer part, going down and back, I'm gonna press in this. I don't want my project to be completely flat like it's laying there. I want it to have a little bit of forward movement. So I pull those picks out a little bit so there's some space between what's going on in the back and what's going on in the front. And there were some pieces that had been picked off. I guess whoever had it before me had used those pieces. So I just pushed those to the back. I could have cut them off, but they don't bother me. So I just moved them out of the way. Now I'm gonna take some of this really pretty lamb's ear and add it sort of toward the center in the front. I like the color of this, this bluish green color with the purple of the lavender. I think it looks very complimentary. I'm going and taking little pieces of the picks and covering up to make sure that we don't have any of that floral foam showing because it is difficult to achieve a high-end look when you leave all of your hardware and such out. You want it to be covered up with your greenery or whatever that you have. Flowers, greenery, bows, whatever you have. You don't want anything showing. And then just add here and there. I've added a larger pick on the bottom, but only one and one to the side because we're gonna add a bow and I need space. So the right lower part is where we're gonna put the bow. I'm just gonna continue to add bits and pieces of a pick that I've pulled off here and there where I feel like I need it to add a little extra. I don't wanna to put too much on because I don't wanna cover up my farmer's market wording. So now I've got some eucalyptus. I'm gonna add that in. It's almost like a step down, you know, from the lavender and then eucalyptus and then the lamb's ear. It's kind of like a step down process. So now let's work on our bow. It's a very easy bow. I'm gonna show you how to make it here and we're gonna measure it out. All right, so there's 12 inches. Now I'm gonna hold where the 12 inches is so I can mark again where I go to the six and that makes 18 inches. So we have an 18 inch tail and I'm just gonna hold it like this and then start making my loops. Now I make your loop. This ribbon looks the same on both sides so I'm just gonna pull it over and I'm going to measure a six inch loop which is actually 12 inches of ribbon, but it's a six inch loop. So if you're measuring yours on your cutting mat or on your ruler, we're going to be making six inch loops. Now I'm just measuring with my fingers here, you know, pulling those bow ends together instead of having to refer constantly to my ruler to see that they're the same size and that does work. There's your proof. So now we have one loop on each side. Here's our second loop and then I'm again measuring, and then one more loop on the other side, and we will have four loops, and that's all we're gonna need for this bow. Just like that, same measurements, and then I'm gonna make my tails the same length. Cut that off, love my Arteza scissors, they are so sharp. Okay, now that's what we have for the bottom part of our bow. I'm gonna put it in a clip, 
and set it aside while we work on the next part. Now you can see here what I'm doing. Same thing, we want to have a long tail. It's going to be 18 inches just like the other one. And now I'm going to make the loops. Instead of 6 inches, we're going to do 5 inches on this one. And we're only going to make 2 loops. So one on one side, one on the other side, and then our other tail. This is not a wired ribbon, so you can't expect too much from a ribbon that doesn't have wire as far as bow making. So I didn't want to use a big bulk in this particular type of a fabric ribbon because it's not really going to go where I want it to go. It's not really going to stay where I want it to stay. So I'm just going to add it to the middle of my firmer ribbon, which is on back, and it has its wire. I'll be able to adjust the back a little bit more than the front. And you can see here I'm getting an idea of how I want it to be. I'm going to take a zip tie. Keep, I'm going to keep holding it in my other hand and just put that zip tie through the center. And then pull it down. Once you get it in there nice and tightly, you can cut it off. And then kind of put your bow where you want it to go. Kind of fluff it. I fluff the bow about a thousand times. I do it as I'm making it, after I make it, when I put it down, after it is fixed where it needs to be, and then before I film the end result of my project, I fluff it again. So it's a constant process for me, constantly moving around. If you look at your bows and go, oh, geez, that is terrible. That is an awful bow, I can't stand it. No, just keep fluffing, keep working on it. Believe, believe that it is going to be better because it always is. For me, always fluffing the heck out of it really makes a difference. Make it the way you want to make it. So now I'm just taking another piece of that ribbon, folding it over, making a nice little square, gluing it, and then putting it down in the center because I don't want to see that zip tie underneath there. And you just never know from different angles if you're going to see it or not. So there's the bow all fluffed out. And I'm going to go in now and add in what I feel like needs to be added in any of my little blank spots. I see some areas that need to be widened a bit, and I think that putting a little extra right here would help lengthen that. Make it a little bit wider from side to side. I'm just gluing it to the back of the sign. We don't want any bald spots, if you will. I want a little more height here, so I'm adding that. And then I'm going to dovetail my ends. This is a very deep dovetail, meaning I'm cutting it a long, a long snip of it. You can see how long I'm cutting that rather than just a tiny one, and it makes a very deep V-cut. You can do it any way you want. In this one, I'm not going to dovetail. I'm cutting it slants. So you can do a variety. You can mix it up. Just be sure you do something to it. Make it look intentional. And this is how it turns out. And I really like it. You can see some of that lavender is kind of moving forward. Some of it's flopping downward. It's just a really pretty farmhouse piece, I think. Real cottagey. Here is the wreath. You can see how it looks while it is hanging up. And you can see how the lavender is spilling forward. And I really like that. Right, we're going to start off with this cross. Now, I got mine thrifted, but you can definitely get the wire ones at Dollar Tree. But I'm going to show you how to do it if you have this kind. So it's about a 20 by 12. Then I'm going to take some burlap, just plain burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. And we're going to wrap around all of this stuff. So this is pretty easy to do, but you're going to have to protect your fingers for sure because you're going to be using some hot glue and some sketchy little areas. So I'm just going to take the corner right here in the bottom and we're going to start on the bottom part of the cross. So I'm taking my hot glue, touching the wire, and also putting it down on the burlap. Then I'm going to wrap halfway over the bottom and fold it under. You can see that I'm kind of folding it or cupping it under, just like this. And then in order to save and preserve the amount of ribbon we're using, I want you to be very careful and just try to overlap where the wired parts are so that you don't have a bunch of extra ribbon being wasted by wrapping it around and around and around and overlapping it like crazy. So you can see here, I'm just pretty much trying to wrap it, tack it down with a little bit of glue and just stretch that ribbon as long as, as far as it will go. 
because I realize some people are not being able to get out right now. It's winter time, maybe you're snowed in. Let's get out some of those things that maybe you had at fall and go ahead and use those. Use up that stash that I know all of us crafters have. So you're just gonna continue around like this, overlapping just, just, you know, over the little wired area, just enough so that you cover up your frame like this. Now let's talk about some goals here. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know that my goals are 15,000 subscribers by August the 1st. Some people don't understand why this is important to me, but if you watch my channel and you're already subscribed, you probably already know why. I want to be able to show people that you can have a beautiful home without having to pay a fortune to make the pieces that you put in there. And you'll make them look exactly how you like them, uniquely to your own taste. So if you're not subscribed and you're watching this video, I would love to have you as part of my family. It's easy to do and free. So you can see how I finished off the back and I'm going to go around on the arms and leave the inside open. So the same process as before, I'm gonna choose a corner, doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna put a little glue on the frame and a little glue on the burlap. I'm gonna cup it under and then I'm gonna fold it around. Now don't be concerned about what we're gonna do with the edges because I'm gonna show you a way to make those nice and neat and you won't see any of your hardware underneath. So just go ahead and continue around, very easy. And then when you get to the back, cut it off and be, be careful and make sure that you're putting all your glued loose ends in the back. You don't... All right, so I'm going in here in the edges, just tacking it down with some glue. I'm gonna roll it under so that it's close to the frame, nice and neat. You can see what we're doing here and I'm just gonna take that hot glue and kind of sandwich those pieces together. I folded it under, got a nice clean edge, and now I'm just using my protected fingertips to pinch this closed. It's gonna keep that burlap ribbon from slipping off, and it's gonna make it nice and neat. Now, to be honest, you can see here, it takes a little more of your ribbon when you're doing the shorter arms and the top than it does on the bottom. And that's just because you don't have a lot of room to work there. But still, I didn't even use a whole spool to do this, so that's pretty good, right? All right. Now I'm just gonna continue around like this. Again, this is easy to tuck down. You got the little edge where we folded it under. We're gonna press it down into the inside and roll the edges and push them together. You can do this, right? Protect those fingers, though. Be sure you get some finger protectors. You can get them at Dollar Tree, so they're $1.25. Uh, the dollar and quarter tree and they're real easy to use you just slip them on your finger they're stretchy so they fit most fingers all right same process we're gonna wrap this around and around and around now I slow this down because I want you to see that at the top I have a little hook area here and you might not have this but if you do just work around it that's what I'm doing I'm rolling it under tucking it in it's being stubborn Use your glue where you need it. And then continue around. Now, if you're gonna make a hanger for this, it would be great to put your hanger underneath before you wrap it with the ribbon so that it'll be concealed and it'll look nice and neat and high-end looking and finished. Y'all excuse my hair. I keep getting my head in the way. So you can see here what I've done. And I'm gonna continue around, just making sure that that is stuck down in there. If you just have a wire wreath, from Dollar Tree, you don't have to worry about all this little, uh, those little stick areas or the little, I don't know, vine areas that are poking through. But um, yeah, you get the you get the idea though. So we're gonna press that down and make it nice and neat. I want the back to be neat looking too and finished. So I want to make sure that all my edges are nice and trimmed down. Now, so far, this is what we have. This is the base that we have created. We've left the center open because this is where we're gonna do our arranging. Now, go and pick out whatever flowers you like. I know a lot of times you can find beautiful deep reds and purples. 
in the fall so you may have some of that in your stash i have these picks from last year that were thrifted also the white branches i've had those from last year i've actually used them in a different wreath but if you want to use fall here is an example of one that i thrifted from fall you can just take off the leaves that are fall specific and add on different leaves you've seen me do that in other videos that's so easy to do then you're going to want some type of a flyaway here you can get that kind of stuff at dollar tree as well or it may be in your stash already I chose purple for my flowers because of, you know, it being a Christian holiday. So you do yours however you would like. Now you can just take those branches. Like I know Dollar Tree has branches that you can get sometimes. I know they have pussy willow. I know they have dogwood I've seen in some people's halls. Um, so you could use something like that if you would like. I love that this looks like dogwood to me. Um, so I'm going to use it. I'm just crossing them end over end like I'm making a swag that's going to go at a diagonal. My idea is like you see in um, like outside of some churches they'll have like a big cross and then they'll have the purple sash across and uh, so I wanted to use the purple flowers for that and then the sideways swag would be representative of the sash. So that's what I'm doing here. I hope y'all like this. I have never done, to my knowledge, to my memory, I have never done a cross wreath. So I hope this is something that y'all like. And if you don't, you know, and this is not your thing, then you can certainly use the technique on other wreaths. So you don't have to worry about that part of it. Just go ahead and just take the inspiration from it. Maybe you just like the way you needed some information on how to wrap a wreath with burlap, then you got it here. If you needed to know how to make a swag, you got that here too. So I'm just making little pins. I'm using the pins to stick through, twist them on the back, and secure these branches down where I need them. You can do it wherever you feel like the heavy spots are or where it needs a little something extra to hold it down and keep it from, you know, flopping around and coming away from your frame. This is actually going to be sort of a low profile wreath it's not going to be a whole lot sticking out we're not going to do a bow for it but you certainly can so you could actually probably do this on most screen doors you know if you have a storm door outside and you could actually put this on your door and it would fit without being crushed so i'm going to continue around just like this twist it and then i'm going to take my clippers and cut through each of those wires and press it back down into the frame you don't want this scratching your door and certainly if you want to go ahead and cover this up with a little extra ribbon or something, you can. Y'all need to join us in our community tab for giveaways and fun. We're doing weekly giveaways. I'm learning all about my subscribers and we are having a blast over there. All right, so just continuing around. You know I do this with my arranging. I just move things until it looks exactly like I want it to look and it gives me the feel that I like. So now I'm going to start with these beautiful deep purple hydrangeas. I'm going to cut the stems off because we don't need all of that in there. It's just making it too hard on us. Follow me on my social media. I'd love to see you there. All right, so I'm going to take one and put it kind of in the corner on the left. So if you look at that little section there that's open as a box, this is in the left corner, upper, and this is in the right lower corner and I'm just gonna push them together. And the reason I'm doing this is because I kinda want it to look like one big flower. And I think it, since they're the same color, it does kind of have that effect. Now I'm gonna take my branch here with my little berries and just cut that down. I'm gonna cut it apart because I only have one and I wanna be able to spread this out over this swag. And in this way, I can do it. So I'm just going to press this up into here. Now, if you can get in there around the branches, you don't even have to use any hot glue in this area. Just press it up in there, and you can also use the overlapping parts of your burlap to hold in your florals. So I'm just trimming off the little extra stuff there and putting it down in the same way that I would if I was making a swag. I'm doing it on the top corner and I'm doing it on the bottom corner. Or if you do it on the left, do it on the right. You know that sort of thing. That's the way I want this wreath to look. And see, look at that. I pushed those closer together and just immediately made it look like one big flower. That's so much better. But that's why you want to look at it from all angles and above it and beside it and to the left, to the right, um, to make sure that it looks exactly 
how you want it to look to look like you design this with intention in mind and so I noticed here where it overlaps that there is a gap and I do not like that so I'm gonna fix that by simply pulling out some flowers that are kind of extra that are kind of you know you won't be missed in that area and I'm gonna place them down right here on the branch and I'm not putting them straight up I'm doing them kind of to the side and facing to the side like the rest of the flowers so that they fit in so this is what I'm doing at this point taking it looking at it from all different directions to see what I need and I feel like I need more flyaways so I found these beautiful picks they were in my little stash that I have with a bunch of extras that I cut off of other things and I'm so glad that I picked it up because the colors look beautiful with this they just are perfect so because these are on just plastic I'm just pulling these apart in little sets of twos and threes but if you have wire in yours just cut them with your little wire cutters there I've got some little cutters right there that I got from the thrift store and then see how I just press that one up into the the frame here it's into the ribbon and right into the frame and it stays right where it needs to be if you're in a place that gets a lot of wind and it's not protected though you know you might want to do a little extra um, gluing and certainly if you're going to sell this you would want to glue this in place but for my purposes of teaching you and inspiring you I am just going to get this project done and tell you how to do it the right way how about that okay so we have some down on the left side uh, on the left top and then we have the ones that we place down on the right if you're looking at it on the right so when you have a pick that doesn't have a long enough stem just grab a piece of plastic a stem another piece of floral stick whatever you have and just wrap it up add to it and that's what I'm doing right here I know I need a little more height so I'm taking my floral tape which by the way if you don't know is waxed you have to pull on it to make it stick it's not sticky like regular tape you pull and twist and that's how it sticks it releases the wax and it will stick to your project so now that's perfect that gets it right up where I like it simple little simple little hack there and this is our final project you can definitely put a bow on here if you'd like but I like mine simple and rustic as it is so this is what it looks like when it is hanging I believe in you I really do I know that you can do this this is an easy project and if you enjoyed it I would love a thumbs up it really really helps my channel we're starting off with a pine swag and we're gonna add some of this burlap ribbon this came from burlap.com I'll have the links in the description box if you're interested these are some floral bouquets that I got from the thrift store I've got a variety of them pretty much in the same colors a couple of them are duplicates and we're going to use those here's some more thrifted florals this is Ashland I think that came from Michaels or Hobby Lobby these are thrifted as well you know almost everything I have is thrifted so we're going to start off with this swag I'm going to put the link up here in the corner so you can see the other um, project that I did with it and see how I put it down on that board here is some thrifted eucalyptus garland I'm gonna have several different pieces of that these are some spring looking picks that I had that are kind of leftovers pretty much it's all thrifted I'm gonna show you how I chose to put this down now you can do it any way you want and don't worry about that being pine underneath don't let that deter you from watching this video because we're gonna cover every bit of that up so I'm gonna use my pine branches to wrap around the end of this garland and cut the little plasticky end off nothing there that we that is going to add any value to this so I'm just going to cut it off and then I'm going to kind of twist it back and forth from the left to the right left to the right so that I cover up a lot of this greenery with the eucalyptus garland we want this to look springy I mean you know pine trees and evergreens they're here all the time thus being evergreen but we want this to be more springy looking more spring inspired and so this is a really good way to take a piece that you already had really stretch that dollar and make something pretty that could last potentially all year so I'm just going to keep adding this now when I got this thrifted garland it was cut into pieces 
Um, there are a couple of strands that are whole and there are some that are cut into little pieces. So I'm just, with that in mind, I'm finding the pieces that look like they'll fit for what I need. You can use whole pieces and you can certainly find uh, floral garlands at Dollar Tree um, and at the thrift store. So just look for them. I always get mine off season. I've had this garland since probably November and I've been hanging on to it. And when I saw it, I saw the potential and it is fantastic quality. I mean, it is really nice quality. So I'm just going to make sure that I have it, you know, kind of extending out the sides a little bit and laying on top of everything. I like to put the greenery down first and then start adding the florals because I want my base to be nice and lush and I love green. I love the greenery. So I'm doing the same thing to the bottom as I did on top. I know I'm a little bit out of camera. It's kind of difficult because my, ter my table is not very um, big in front of me. It's a long table side to side, but in front of me I don't have a whole lot of room to work. So kind of playing around with my monopod and try to get the camera where you can see everything. I know some people are really annoyed when they can't see everything. So just use your imagination. What I'm doing on the top, I'm doing on the bottom. And you can see here, it's nice and full. Now I only have two of these, so I'm gonna add one to the top and one to the bottom. And they're going to be going in opposite directions. It's almost like mirrored. If you imagine a line down the center of your of the um, arrangement here, then I'm gonna do the same thing on both ends. It's going to somewhat mirror what's going on on the top and on the bottom. So that may help you because I know you can't see what I'm doing down there. All right, now you see. You can use any picks you have and Dollar Tree has a variety of really pretty picks. Um, generally, I don't know if they have all of their spring out yet, but you know, I'm working right now with what I have, and these are things I already had, so I suggest that you do the same thing. Think of things that maybe you used at Christmas that could also be used in the spring. So I'm adding in these picks, and I'm just gonna kinda go back and forth. One a little bit lower on the right than it is on the left, and etc., all the way down. I do have some pieces that are kind of clipped apart that I used in a wreath and I'll show you how to fix that so that you can use that in a thicker piece. It's very um, simple but sometimes when we're doing things it, you kind of get overwhelmed so you, you don't the simplest things seem to escape you you know you know how it is but I don't want you to give up if you're doing a project and you go oh I don't have that much greenery there's no way I can do that you certainly can use a smaller piece of garland you could even use you could even use an old branch from an old Christmas tree it's that, that would be that simple. Okay, so I'm gonna take these three pieces and I'm gonna wind their wires around each other. Just like this. And then now I have another pick. Now this one is, does not have like five or six pieces like the other ones, but that is okay. As long as we have a representation of that on both sides, I think it looks good. So just be careful if you've got really thin wires that you don't you know, poke yourself, hurt yourself. I know a lot of us are thin skinned and we don't have a lot of collagen left. I'm almost 50. You know, I'm not too far from that. So I know how it is. Plus I'm fair skinned and we, we tend to get boo-boos pretty easily. You'll see lots of my videos with band-aids on my fingers. But I kind of get in a certain mood when I'm doing this. So yeah, my mind goes to another place and I just kind of uh, go with the flow and uh, throw all caution to the wind. All right, I love these. These are really pretty, but it's a different texture and I like that. I think that's gonna add some interest and it's kind of a little flyaway feature and you'll see it again. I'm, I'm sorry, but there it is. I just overlaid it and put it a little bit further down because we're gonna work from the very tips toward the center with these pieces that I don't have a lot of. So I'm just gonna move this up and show you that we're gonna do the same thing down here. I just kind of, you know, fluff it out just a little bit so it's all, has a little bit of dimension in it instead of laying completely flat. And at some point after you have wound these branches around the other pieces, you will have areas that are pretty well, pretty tight, tight enough that you can just shove the pick in there without wrapping anything around it. And I love that. 
It kind of just hangs on to the rest of the stuff you got in there. So now I'm going to move on to my roses and these beautiful peach roses. I'm going to put these in threes because they, they make a bigger impact if you put them in groups. They are a little bit varied. Some are different than others. You could certainly do this with um, any type of flower you like and you could use three different flowers instead of using three of the same thing. But like I said, I'm trying to use the things that I have and uh, because, you know, you can't go out and buy new things if you still have a house full of stuff, right? Or a craft stash that's big as a mountain. So I've got to work through the things I have. And I'm so glad because when I find things thrifting, I pick them up because I really like them. So why not use them, right? I mean, why are we hoarding them if we're not using them, right? Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the next flower, the next type that I have here. And I don't have very many of these. I think these are dahlias. Are these dahlias? Some of you probably would know better than I do. And I'm just going to add those here and there. Then I have one stray white one. I'm putting that there. Then I have these little, they're like um, seed pods or I don't know. It's just a bunch of different random little seedy looking things. Or maybe little flower buds. And then there's some other greenery that's got a little more of the bluish tint. And I'm adding those in. And I'll just continue to do this all over filling in what looks right the greenery that is similar i try to keep with those groupings of the three roses and then i have these little well, they almost look like a berry i put those in there and then get down to my pieces that i only have one of like this beautiful rose and it's colored a little bit differently but i really think it gives some visual impact as well as this one very pretty you got a lot of depth in there with the lighter and the darker colors. And then I have these really pretty white looking picks. And they were thrifted. You cannot get these at Dollar Tree. Hey, but Dollar Tree's stepping it up. They're charging us a little more money, but I believe the quality should be reflected. At least that's my dream and my hope. We can dream, right? All right, so I'm just going to continue around. And see, I have one little pick here, and then I have another little one pick. And I'm just going to put that in there. Because now that I've had my groupings in there, I can see where I need to add extra pieces, where it needs to be a little more filled out. And that's what you do. Now, it's on this backing for a reason. It makes it easier to manipulate, to work with, to hang. And it also gives you the opportunity to use this as a centerpiece or to hang it as a swag on your door or against your wall, which is, makes this very versatile. I absolutely love this. I love it. The colors are just perfect for my taste. Now, I'm going to take 18 inches of this burlap dot com ribbon this is actually a linen and cotton blend ribbon i do believe and it is a beige and cream colored stripe it complements this beautiful farmhouse piece perfectly i think i'm going to cut these into dovetails each one of these also all four of them and i've decided that there's so much going on with the flowers here i don't feel it necessary to put a bow you can certainly do that if you would like but what I'm going to do is going to be a little different, but I think it still softens and complements the piece. So we're going to fold it exactly in half, and then we're going to go down a few inches. The bigger, the farther down you go with your loop, the bigger the loop's going to be, and the shorter the tails. And I'm a little out of frame, but you see here, there's my loop, there's my two tails. I'm going to use a zip tie to close these off. You can use floral wire, pipe cleaner, um, a little if you get some strong jute you can use that whatever you want to use and then just fluff it out a little bit just twist it around fluff it out and get it ready to be made into a pick and this is where I'm just making sure that the size is right and that I like it these are some little skewers that I got when I was out thrifting I thought they would be good for crafting and they're really good for these little hot glue right in the center of the ribbon and then after it dries I'm going to do each one like that and then after they are dried and nice and tight on there we can go ahead and decide where you want to put your little ends it's such a pretty way and, and you know like I had referenced to before a lot of people do not care for bows they don't care for bows but I think that this is a nice way to put that ribbon in there 
and really give you some more softness and accentuate your colors and really scream farmhouse. I mean, that stripe to me really says farmhouse. And I love this ribbon. So I'm going to have that linked and burlap.com. And then one final piece right here in the end. Just add a little hot glue to the end of the picks if you need to, to hold them in place. But for me, I've got so much going on in here, they stayed nicely. And I think this is a good color combination. What do you think about this beautiful piece? I love it. All right, so give it a final look over, add where you need to add, take things away where you need to take things away. And then any of those little pieces of greenery that are left, if you don't want them to show, push them back down into the wreath, just like I'm doing right here. Very easy to do, just twist them and poke them back down in there. No sense cutting them off because you can use this again. So here we have it hanging as a swag that you could use on your wall or your door. And this is how it would look, very lush and full and beautiful. Do you like these colors? Do you prefer like pink, yellow, blue? What colors do you do in the springtime? I love this because they are warm colors and for me, I love warm colors. I love that in my rustic home. It looks great with the wood doors and the wood trim and our wood floors. It's very warm and inviting. I really like it. Okay, so here we use it as a centerpiece. I've just laid it down here. You can add candles if you would like, but I've just put my candles behind it just to show you how pretty and full this would be just laying down. It's not so very tall. So the next part of this project, we're gonna work on a little wreath. My pieces are all thrifted, all of the pieces you see and the wreath. I'm going to pull these apart and cut them into pieces that are fairly the same size and shape. And then I'm going to start placing them down into this wreath. This is one of those vine, I guess, wreaths. And so you don't have to use glue necessarily to hold your pieces or any wire or any other type of thing because a wired piece of greenery or floral will press straight down in here and will hold itself pretty well. Again, if you're gonna be using this for outdoors, you wanna give it some more support you want to use some glue something like that so that the wind doesn't blow anything away but i'm going to keep these pieces inside i really really love the look of this and then i'm going to add that same greenery that we used on the project before on the little clock bigger pieces of it though and i'm just going to place it around my wreath until i get the fullness that i like so I don't count here with doing this type of a wreath because I like the cottagey, rustic, wild look. And then I am just going to add in some more of those little green. They look like tiny roses, but that's not what it is. It's more like a seed pod of some type. So I'm gonna add those all around. This is gonna coordinate very nicely with our first project with the little bird. So I'm just going to fluff it out a little bit and then any places that have a little bald spot I'm going to take one or two little random pieces from the picks that I had left over and I'm just going to glue those in so that it's pretty much symmetrical, you know. And then here's kind of a flat spot, so I'm going to add a piece in here. See, it kind of fills it out. Then these had some really pretty little berries and I'm just going to add those in. And then I can just decide what I want the top to be and what I want the bottom to be how I want it to hang. And I love the look of this. Nice and full and flyaway and wispy and rustic. I'm going to take just a hanger that I had off of another project. I'm gonna push it down into there and I am going to hot glue it. My neighbors are building a house next door. So if you hear a bunch of noise, that would be my dog barking at the construction workers. It's gonna hang it. And then you can just push it toward the center. And look at this little beauty. Now I can use this piece and I've been hanging on to it forever. So I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to make something wonderful from these pieces. We're gonna start off by making a swag for the door. 
and I'm just using a stick that I have here that came from Goodwill. You can use a steak um, from Dollar Tree items if you want to. You can use deco mesh or you can use burlap ribbon, whatever you have, and some pipe cleaners, of course. And then I have a variety of ribbons. This one was thrifted. It's really, really nice. And then this one also I got from the thrift store. And this one came from Dollar Tree, so they have a lot of really pretty ones out right now. We'll be using the pipe cleaners as a way to attach the burlap or deco mesh that you choose to the stick. So I'm going to start off by just twisting one a few times and then pushing it off to the side. I'm going to grab the next one right underneath it or right on top of it, twist it off to the other side. Then you're going to put one in the middle here. So we're going to make ribbon stacks to go on here. You're just going to cut them, cut your ribbons, whichever ones you want to use. Try for a variety of about three. Then we're going to assemble our little stake here. So you're going to start at the top on either side. It doesn't matter or if it's in the middle, do it in the middle. My camera ate my footage, so I am using this footage from a different video because I've done many of these. These are 10 inch poots that you're looking at, but for a smaller project like the one I was doing, I was doing 8 inch poofs with my burlap. So you're going to continue along, going to the middle, going to the outside, going down to the middle, going to the outside, and then once you get to the bottom, you're just going to loop it, make a little poof, loop around to the other side. Very easy to do. So back to those ribbons, we are going to cut some dovetails in ours. You can do yours any way you want, but I found this, this makes a nice crisp look. So here's a variety of burlap and my other thrifted ribbons and my Dollar Tree ribbon that I ran out. So I'm going to just fill in the blank with some of this plaid red and white ribbon. I'll be just kind of alternating throughout with that. To make the stacks, we're just going to make an X and then we're going to take the next piece of the three, put it right in the center walk our fingers pinching toward each other for the little ribbon stack. I found this is about the easiest, most foolproof way to do these. I'm going to press down into the poof there, right where those twist ties are, and just twist that around. So now it is connected to our swag. Continue along, alternating patterns and colors in whichever way that you want to do it. You don't have to undo that all the way. You can leave it just like it is because you have full length pipe cleaner there so you have plenty of room to twist and turn. Twist it down with a few twists and then you can move on to the next section. Once you get all of your bows in place or your ribbon stacks in place, you can go back through there and straighten everything out. It's most ideal if you have wired ribbons, but if you cut them at six inches or lower, it you can actually use unwired ribbons for this and they will kind of hold their own. You can see that the star ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree is not wired, but it is nice and crisp and it is standing up nicely in this little swag. Then you can choose your top and bottom, whichever one you like, and you get to embellish it now. So I have these little ornaments that I thrifted. You can use whatever you have. You can use um, things from the Dollar Tree. These are two Dollar Tree stakes that I cut the stars off of. This is a large star that you could use. Depending on what your taste is, you can use flags to go in the side and just attach them with wire or glue like this or you could use something like this, which is what I originally started off with. There's gonna be a slight change though, so just to let you know. We're gonna work on a bow now to go on the top, now that we've decided what we're gonna use. So, I have about two and a half feet left of this white burlap, and it is wired and I wanted to use it, so I'm just gonna cut two more different ribbons at the same length. easy enough to do. And these are all the same width. I think they're probably, what, two inches maybe? Two inch ribbon. I'm going to use my bow maker tool here. 
If you have one, go ahead and use that, grab that. It makes making bows much easier, or you can make one. I'll link my video where I made my own. So I'm just gonna pinch this up. I've got eight inch tail. I know you can't see down there because it's not focused. And then I'm gonna twist it over, fold it in the middle, and I'm going to have four inch loops. Then I'm gonna go to the other side, pressing down in the middle. I'm gonna grab it, fold it in, just fold it up there. Press my bow down and move those tails off to the top and bottom. I'm gonna just layer my next ribbon on top and continue along. Now this ribbon does not have a one-sided pattern. It's got a pattern on both sides, which makes it easy because you don't necessarily have to do all the twisting and, and such for that. So it makes it pretty easy. And I'm gonna pull my tails over now grabbing the last one, and this ribbon actually does have a front and back. So I will be doing a little twist here. You can see how I twisted it so that the pretty side is outward, or the stitch side will be inward. I'm just checking it there, and then I'm going to fold it over. Press it down, and again with my tails off to the top and bottom. I am going to grab some jute, but you can use another um, Chanel stem if you want to or you can use a zip tie wherever you want to use I'm just trying to get it up under there just get it in place I'm not going to tie it in a double knot at this point I'm just using it to help me hold it until I get it off of my bow maker and then I'm going to slide that over a little bit more to the other side so that it's in the middle and once I get it in the center I'll flip it over give it a couple of tight knots And then I can dovetail my ends. Feel free to slant these or whatever you like to do to finish off your bows. I'm gonna do it to all of my pieces. Now you get to fluff the bow. And to me, this is one of the most fun things to do. I love doing this. If you've watched enough of my videos, you probably already know that about me. It just makes such a big difference in the way it looks. Very nice. So now I'm going to find my spot here. I'm gonna go underneath that top section, thread my jute right through the back, and then flip it over and tie it in place. You're gonna give that a good couple of knots, and if you wanna use your glue gun at this point you can go ahead and do that and you can glue down all of your little sections if you haven't done that already where the little wires meet the board so that it won't slide around completely up to you I always like to remind people that my videos are for inspiration you might not like everything that I do you might prefer to do it a different way but I'm just here to inspire you and then you are gonna do your own little twist do your own thing that makes you happy so now that I have it in place, I can really look at it and decide, do I want things left as they are or trim them down? So you trim them down. I wanna add a little bit more of this pattern because I had a little bit of this ribbon left, not much. So I am gonna just cut that in half and then I'm going to glue it in the middle of this bow. And the glue just neatly sat down in there and I can tuck this down and we don't see any glue and you can just fluff your bow over the top so it looks like little tails there. All right, so now to put the star on, I'm going to thread some of this jute through the top of the star in that little ring and then attach it down on the stake the same way that I did the bow. Just gonna thread it through the back and tie it in place. And here are some ideas for you to embellish. So there's a necklace there, there's some buttons here, and some little wood stars. Anything that you choose, you can put these all over and anywhere. I've decided that I want to use the necklace, so I'm just going to try to carefully cut it over my bucket so that I can catch all those beads and use them for another project. Once I get all my flags off, I am going to add some hot glue and then tuck them into the swag. Just here and there, there's really not a pattern. I just kind of look at it overall and decide what I want to go where. 
You can use table scatter for this if you want to. I think Dollar Tree has like stars um, table scatter and you can use that. That would be really cute in here. Really sparkly and glittery if you like that kind of a look better. My look is a little more on the rustic, like a rustic cottagey farmhouse look, so I prefer this. And then maybe one more on the bottom. Give you an opportunity to check everything out. This is when I decided to take the other star off and replace it with this one. I felt like the colors just worked better with what I had going on. So I took one of those yard stakes and um, the ones that I had cut off of the stick. And then I'm just going to use that to glue down here. I add a little more glue so that it is not flopping around. But you could always wire this down if you wanted to. But I want to make sure that everything is holding up nicely. And this is how it's going to look. To make a hanger on the back, I'm just going to grab the ends of the jute from the bow. I'm going to make a knot on the end, and now we have an opening to hang it. Trim off the excess, refluff where needed, and it's good to go. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. We're going Bye. to be using some thrifted and Dollar Tree ribbon, and that's what I have here. Use whatever you like. I'm going to use this Dollar Tree sign with the bunny. It says hop, and I'm going to use this wreath that I've had for a long time. I thrifted it, and here are the measurements for you if you want to do something approximate. I wanted an oval so that it would maintain like a sort of an egg shape. I'm going to take off the flower that is on the bunny, and we're going to have to find a way to attach the sign to the wreath. So I'm going to use a pipe cleaner or Chanel stem, whatever you want to call it, some hot glue, and a little piece of paper. I'm going to press that down and let it cool, and go to the other side and do the same thing. You need to kind of put it on there and and look at it and see if it's where you want this to connect. And then set it aside to cool. We're going to start looking at some flowers and these are thrifted flowers. I'm, uh, I'm not sure where they came from. I can't see the tag. But you can get them pretty much anywhere this color this time of year. I'm going to feed these wires through here and then twist them on the back very easy and do the same thing on the other side make sure that you position that little bunny right where you want him in the wreath and I'm trying to make sure that he's down far enough that I can see the top of his little head so we're gonna make sure that it's tight when you flip it over you can tighten it up and then poke those little pieces of wire straight down into that ribbon and to the wreath all right, I want to save these leaves, so I'm just going to push them up toward the flower head and go ahead and cut these off. I'm leaving about five inches, and then we're going to pick our greenery and cut those off. I want this to be something that is not so bushy, so I'm going to trim it down. And I only had three of these pieces of fern, so I'm going to try to place them strategically so that they can be seen. It's really easy with this type of a grapevine wreath because you can just poke it down in there and it will pretty much stay where you put it. But I'm going to give you some options in case yours is not being agreeable. You can use a little hot glue and press it down like that until it's dry. Or you can make some little pins, which is what I do. And you're essentially making, taking the floral wire and making like, like a little bobby pin. If you're familiar with a bobby pin, you're just going to fold it just like that and then you're going to make sure that it is over the stem part of your flower or your greenery push it through your wreath and then on the back just twist it around and poke it back into the frame I'm going to do the same thing here now I'm working in a somewhat of a moon shape on the side and I'm going to do things in opposite directions so I'll have part of the arrangement going upward and then I'm going to do it backwards on the bottom 
and have it going sort of, well, backwards or in the opposite direction. So pretty much their stems are facing one another, if that makes more sense. Okay, so I'm going to take the flower and bend it so that it has a little neck that's bending its head forward. And then I'm going to push the leaves up and then feed it down into the wreath. That's so simple and you don't even have to have any glue to make these flowers stay, which is great because these are very pretty flowers and I may want to use them again in another project. Same thing here, I'm going to push up my leaves, bend it, make a little neck for it, and then press it down. The reason I bend it is so that it will be facing straight upward instead of being at an angle. So I want it facing outward so that when it's hanging on the wall or the door, you can see it right into the center of the flower. And that's important with these flowers because it's got that very pretty greenish yellow in the center. And I want you to be able to see that, not just the pink side of the flower. So continuing along, press, pushing up the leaves and arranging those flower heads, just kind of bending it out. And you can see that the, we're forming a moon shape on the side. So my third piece is going to go right here on the side. I'm just going to bend it a little. And then continue adding greenery here and there where it makes sense and elongating that line of flowers by just continuing around the side a little bit. So what was our moon shape or our, our quarter moon shape over there is now a little bit elongated going toward the side. And I'm going to go up toward the top and this flower is smaller than the rest of them so I think that it is appropriate to be at the beginning. A lot of these flowers, if you have a good quality flower, you'll be able to kind of play around with those petals and make them stay where you want them instead of just using squished flowers. And I know sometimes when we get them, they're mashed, but just fluff them out. Fluff them out and give them a chance. Um, they have a lot of potential. So rather than the flowers that he had on his neck, I decided that a little, little pretty bow would be appropriate. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this ribbon. I did thrift it, but it is originally from Dollar Tree. I don't know if it's out this year, but they do have a really pretty plaid that you can use. I just want something that's going to coordinate with the other ribbons that I've chosen and also with the flowers. So with these bows, you know, just keep playing with them. Don't give up on yourself and, and think that you've created a disaster. It's easy enough to fix, and then you can force it into place with a little bit of hot glue if it is not agreeing with you. So just a dot. It doesn't take a lot, and I'm just using my thumb on the inside so that it doesn't make the bow flat. I'm only gluing down the bottom or the back portion. And then we're going to glue down the tails. They'll stay right where they need to be. Now we're going to start on a pretty bow. I'm going to take 18 inches and fold it over. And then I'm going to fold this several times. And in the end, I'm going to have three loops on one side, two loops on the other side. This is an easy bow. And don't worry about it. If you lose track when you're counting, that is totally fine. Whatever you come up with is going to be a pretty bow. I assure you. Just fold it over several times, don't worry about it. Now I'm folding it in half so that I can get my centers and I'm going to notch this bow just cutting through the wire and right into the fabric. This bow has been done lots of times by me. It's an easy bow to do. I did not create this bow. Some people say that it is the Olivia bow, but I've seen it done by people other than Olivia as well. So I don't know who originated it. Can't really give credit to that person. But I can give thanks because this is a very, very easy bow to use. Same process here, but I'm going to have two loops on each side. And then I'm going to cut this off. This ribbon that I thrifted does not have any wire in it. But it is a very, mm, I'll say it's a thick, good quality fabric that this ribbon is made out of. So carefully putting a notch in the side here, turning the bow around and notching it here. 
Then I'm gonna line the notches up. Make sure that your loose ends are downward. And then you can use a pipe cleaner. You can use whatever you like, but a pipe cleaner works best for me on this type of bow. Slip it into the notches of the bigger bow. And then you're gonna flip it over. Get your zip tie arranged here. I'm just gonna kind of pleat the back of the bow just in the fold before I pull it tight. And then start pulling out the tails and the bow. I like to start on the bottom of my bows when I began to fluff them out. It's just a little bit easier for me. Um, but you can do this whichever way you would like. And then I'm gonna pull the top apart. So you see I have five loops on the bottom and four on the top and the little tails that are sticking out there. Now feel free to cut the tails down very low if you want to do that. You can dovetail the tails. You can cut them at a slant, just whichever way you like best. I wanted to do the dovetails on here. They're not really noticeable in the end with this bow, but in the event that they would show up, I like the idea of them being dovetailed. Just seems more festive. And this is sort of a Eastery and definitely a spring wreath. And so easy. And I've spent very little money. I bought the sign. I had everything else already. So that's pretty good, right? $1.25 for the sign? Yeah. So even though this doesn't have wire, the quality of the fabric is allowing me to move that around and keep it in a nice shape. And then we're going to do the tails. Very easy. We're going to do 18 inches for the tail. Just cut off one of each of those ribbons and I'm going to slant these. I'm going to mix it up, give it a little variety. Just cut it on a slant. Very easy. So you have some options. You know, you can, you can do it a bunch of different ways. You don't have to copy me exactly. You can do whatever you are inspired to do. That's why I do these videos. It's to inspire you. It's to make you think, hmm, I could do that. But I like, maybe I like purple. Or maybe I like blue or yellow better for Easter. Whatever you like, you can do it that way. Or maybe you were at Goodwill and you found a really beautiful gray and white checked ribbon. Go ahead and use that. Whatever you have, you can use it. It's going to be unique and it's going to bring you joy because it's going to be exactly what you love. And that's what we need in our home. So we're going to use the wire here that we twisted this with. Go right through that wreath and twist it around. And then we have our tails. And I wanted the tail to be kind of attached sort of toward the bottom, toward the inside, so that we have plenty of length represented and the bow doesn't cover the entire thing up. I'm going to feed a little through the back behind there and then a little on the side because I like the way that looks. But you can do it any way you like. I just want to be sure that my bunny can be seen. So the ribbon that is around the bunny's neck, I'm going to use to tie around the center of our bow. It matches so well. It's very, very coordinated. And then we're just going to go ahead and use that ribbon to tie around just thread it between the tails there and around the back of the wreath. So tie it tightly in a double knot and trim off what we don't need. If it was in the center, you could make a hanger with that. But we have ours off to the side, as I often do in my wreaths. You see how you can curl the ribbon just with your fingers? So if you wanted it to be in the front, you could do that. Alright, I had some greenery left, so I'm just going to cut it apart and go in here and add little pieces here and there until I get the fullness that I like. You know, I always recommend that you turn your pieces side to side and look at it from all angles to ensure that you get it looking exactly how you like it. And it's looking good so far. I like this. I like all the variety in the colors and the greenery. It looks very spring to me. So I live in the country, so we have lots of types of greens in our trees and in the grasses and the moss so it's really nice to be able to put that in our arrangements Let's try the, the second one color burlapfabric.com has sent me some goodies and i got the green the white 
and the large burlap ribbon all from them. I have some thrifted flowers. These are orange and white, but I'm going to change those out in a bit. This is a Dollar Tree sign, very pretty, and that is from this year. And then I have this egg wreath from Dollar Tree this year. I knew I had to have this. I knew I had to do something with it. Well, I got a little bit crazy and I broke it when I was taking the tag off. So it's easy to fix. I'm just using some masking tape, but you can use electric tape. You can use duct tape, whatever you have, to just go over the place that it is broken. Twist it around and now it is good to go. It's strong, no problem. I'm gonna cut down here at, I think I have 12 inches. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do for this wreath. So this is burlap, it's not deco mesh, but we're gonna use the same technique. I'm gonna fold over about an inch here and then walk my fingers up to the end and the last inch I'm gonna fold over and then pull into the center. It makes a cruffle, just like when you're using deco mesh. This is the technique that we're gonna to use to cover the base of our egg. So I have, I think, 10 or 11 of these zip, of these, hmm, <laughs> chenille ties. All you have to do is feed them through the outside ring, twist them around. I didn't think you wanted to see all of that. Then you're going to take one cruffle for each of these segments. So each of these little ties or chenille stems, I don't know why I cannot grasp the word pipe cleaner today. Maybe my medication. Who knows? I might need some more coffee. But this is what we're gonna do. You're just gonna continue all the way around. I use the outer rings for this because I want this to be larger. So I want it to be on the outside rings for that. If you alternate, it's gonna make it appear a little bit smaller and I want it to be as big as possible. I love this cream colored burlap. I thought this would be the perfect way to be a base on this beautiful egg wreath. I think you're gonna like this one. So we're gonna continue around just like this and don't worry about where they overlap. We're gonna adjust that in a minute and you'll be able to be sure that your entire frame is covered. And this does a really good job. If you wanted to save a little bit, you could probably do 10 inch um, little cruffles instead. 12 inches is what I went with and I'm very pleased with it. So here we go and this is how it looks. Go ahead, once you've got those together, and fix them so that they overlap each other in the right way to be able to cover your frame. And look at that coverage. Oh, this is gonna be really nice. So, I'm gonna go ahead and start making the bundles of ribbon that are gonna go in each one of those cruffles. So here you see me using some ribbon that I got on clearance at, I believe it was Michael's or maybe Joann's. We're gonna do 10 inch strips. So this is a wired ribbon, really pretty. And I know that gray is a, a very popular color. And then we're gonna do 10 inches of our burlap that is wired, that is white or cream. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the beautiful green. So now we have three pieces and we're gonna create stacks with these. This is easy to do. You, don't, you can choose any pattern that you like. You can put your plaid on the bottom, you can put your plaid in the middle, whatever you wanna do. We're gonna create an X and then a line straight down the middle. Pinch it up in the center and that is going to be our bundle. Now be sure you can use your little clips to hold it. I always do this. It just makes it an easier process. You can slant or dovetail your ends. I found that dovetailing the ends really gives it more I guess kind of volume when you are fluffing in the end and I really like that aspect. So just go ahead and dovetail or cut them at a slant. And I wanted to show you on the first one how we do that and then pull those back apart. You can get an idea of how they're gonna look. It's gonna get a little crunched up when you put it down on your wreath and you'll see that. I'm gonna show you how we do it. So I'm gonna take that off. Remember your clip is on the front side Push it down into the, the center and then tightly twist this in. You're gonna continue all the way around the wreath in the same technique. 
press it down into the center and twist it. It doesn't matter which way you lay this pattern and if your pattern is messed up it doesn't matter. When you fluff it you're not going to be able to tell. Y'all we had so much fun doing our little Q&A Saturday. I had a blast. I've been stuck in the bed with a back injury and I had so much fun. Thank you for everybody who showed up for that. Um, it just really, it made my day. It was a lot of fun. And we got to know each other. We did questions and answers. If you're not part of our YouTube family, consider subscribing. Checking out that community tab that's on my, my front page and following along with us as we do our polls and daily questions and win prizes. We have a lot of fun doing that. Um, we've had a lot of winners and they're very happy. You know, they're reporting back saying they're happy with their packages and that makes me happy because I want everybody to have the ability to craft and to express themselves and have some joy in their life. And a little package is always fun. Okay, so you can see now I'm fluffing. I'm turning out all of those tails. I'm dividing, making sure all of my colors are represented and my patterns are represented. And it just makes a beautiful, beautiful base. Look at that. I am absolutely loving those colors together. Stunning. I just absolutely love it. I'm so glad I have ribbon left on each of those spools to do more projects. So you may see these colors again. Now you can see it's still shaped like an egg and I love that. We're going to go ahead and take all of that extra stuff off the sign and we're going to get it ready to attach to the wreath. So use your hot glue, put down your chenille stems or your pipe cleaners or your floral wire, whatever you want to use, and a little glue and a little bit of paper. Once it is cooled, you can go ahead and center it where you want it on your wreath and then feed those wires through the form into the back. When you do this, be sure that you're not pulling it too tight because you will crush down your wreath and it's going to not be as pretty as it would if it looked as though it was floating on the top of the wreath. And that's kind of what you want it to look like. It's just very gently resting on the top. You don't want to squish anything down by doing it too aggressively. So then take the little tails of the ribbons that are nearby and you can use those to cover up the holes that are in your sign there and you want to fluff them out so that you can see everything because the ones underneath you can't see as well. I am pulling all the flowers off of their picks and this is kind of where I decide that the orange is not the best color and you'll see that I changed it to cream. I've cut down my wires because we won't be needing those anymore up there on the top. I don't recommend this type of a pipe cleaner. It's kind of a swirly pattern, but it's really hard to use the wire cutters and cut through the fabric part. That's what's sticking. The wires work, the fabric part does not. So here are my cream colored flowers. My kids are upstairs making noise. Y'all excuse that. I'm going to use my little creamy yellow and my white and just kind of alternate all the way around. And you see, I still have my egg shape, and that's so pretty. I love that. This would be maybe more of a farmhouse look, but I still think that I'm going to make it look more cottagey, and you'll see that shortly. So, of course, I'm going to use my greenery. I'm not going to throw that away. You know, that part of the rustic in me is going to remain that way. That's just who I am. And I'm going to start adding down my flowers. Now, Right where our ties or our twists are in the center of those floral bundles is where we're going to place these down. You're not going to see it at all. And they just fit. These, these daisies just fit nicely in the cup of those bundles. I love that. And we're going to make a little bigger leaf to go on the bottom part. And it's going to go underneath the sign. So we don't want to have too much going on up top and then nothing on the bottom. I'm going to add some hot glue, of course, to hold these things in place. I'm going to lift up on it a little bit so that my flower doesn't disappear under the sun. I can still see the bunny, so I'm happy about that. And again, move things around where you like them once you get your flowers in there because they are going to cover up some of the arrangement. And thankfully, we can move those wires and those uh, ribbons around because they are not glued down. They're just twisted down right 
and this is how it looks so far so this would be actually perfect if you wanted farmhouse but I'm gonna make it a little more cottagey and I'm gonna add some beautiful little I think these are ranunculus and they are a peachy color which I am loving this spring y'all know that we've talked about it I am loving this color this spring and it looks beautiful with this pale sweet yellow just it's just a buttery soft yellow and I'm just gonna add these here and there there is no rhyme or reason I'm definitely gonna take the greenery that came with the picks and I'm gonna use that as well doing this in my opinion adds more of a cottage look we're adding that look as if it was actually picked from a garden and brought into your home and of course when you do that you are bringing in the greenery that goes along with it right of course so we're just gonna keep doing that all the way around where it looks like I want it to go I didn't do a pattern with the placement of these little flowers and the greenery I wanted it to look a little more wild and doing that without a pattern kind of does that just here and there I'm gonna continue along like that so what colors are you doing for Easter this year I know a lot of people in my polls said that they love purple so I'm very happy to say that I will be doing some purple arrangements some purple mm, creations we'll just put it that way I definitely have the supplies on hand and I am ready to go with that we're going to continue to place those here and there and I think that looks so pretty and sweet Dollar Tree has several different versions of that sign they have one I think that says blessed um, they may have one that says Easter I'm not sure love and I'm not sure what the other one is but there's at least three of them so if you don't find this one go ahead and just grab another one just go with whatever colors are in that one now that is sweet that is a cottage creation if I've ever seen one here is our first project it's the beautiful hop wreath they got a little squished again I need to go fluff it again but this is the first wreath I used a bunch of thrifted items I only spent one dollar on this wreath and that was for the sign well a dollar twenty-five are you gonna try any of these I really hope you do and I would love for you to follow me on Instagram because over there if you tag me I can see the projects that you make and we can talk to one another also all right so we're gonna use a little bit of ribbon here I've just got some black ribbon I got from the thrift store this was also thrifted and this is just like a burlap striped ribbon I have some thrifted florals and then some fern from the Dollar Tree it's just called foliage on this sticker but it's a fern and then two thrifted burlap flowers they look like roses I'm just gonna clip those all apart the sign from Dollar Tree and a broom that I thrifted I find these all the time at the thrift store so hopefully you can too so I'm just measuring this and it looks like it's about 36 inches you're gonna need some pipe cleaners and we're gonna start putting this together so I'm gonna take one pipe cleaner and put it at the top about three inches down I guess two and a half three inches I'm gonna twist it off to the side put one right underneath it or just right above it or overlapping it doesn't matter and I'm gonna twist it and push it off to the side we're going to get ready with our next one and measure down about five inches twist it off to the side and you're going to continue this down until we get eight of these now if your broom is shorter you can use less or put them closer together whichever way you choose if your broom happens to be a little longer you can do more or stretch them a bit further apart not too far or your poofs won't be poofs anymore so now we're down here toward the bottom and we're going to start with our ribbon I'm just pinching up about an inch from the bottom of that roll and I'm going to place it tightly down in the center 
and twist the pipe cleaner around. It's going to hold it tightly in place. I'm just going to jump it over the end of the broom. We're jumping the broom here and measuring about, I think I have nine inches. I'll measure it for you. Yes, nine inches. So I'm just going to gather it up in my hand just like that and go to the center of this pipe cleaner. Push it tightly down into the center and then give it a couple of good tight twists so that it doesn't come loose. You don't want to use um, you don't want to use zip ties here because we're going to be adding more on top so we actually are going to need that pipe cleaner to hold it in place. Or you can use floral wire if you want to. Okay, so doing the same thing here and we're going to just continue down in nine inch little poofs all the way down to the bottom. And then one more time. Nine inches. And you could just kind of eyeball it. You don't have to measure it if you don't want to. Just whatever you want to do. I just want to get them pretty much the same size. And I'm pulling them off to the side as you noticed. When I get to the bottom, I'm just going to give it a little dovetail. And then we're going to start on the bottom where we left off, doing the same as we did up top. But I want my bottom to be a little bit longer, a little hanging down piece so it will be somewhat, you know, the same size as the one that's on there. You can go ahead and cut it in a dovetail. And then we're going to go right back up this side doing the same thing. When you twist it, just push them off to the side and push that loop off to the side. Since we're going to be applying that sign down in the middle, we really don't need anything getting in our way. So most of the goodness needs to be on the outside. That's where you're going to see it anyway, not hidden underneath the sign. So we're back to the top now. And then you can just cut that little piece off. Now we're going to start adding some little, um, a little stack of ribbon to each one of the pipe cleaners. And we're going to start that off by measuring our burlap ribbon. It doesn't have any wire in it. And I'm making these about nine, it looks like about eight or nine inches there. I'm going to make enough for each stack to have two. So since we had eight, we're going to do 16. You can go ahead and dovetail those ends, make those nice and pretty. If you have any little snaggy pieces hanging off, go ahead and trim that off too. Look how nice that looks. Perfect. Continue along in this process all the way. I hope y'all are having a beautiful day and that you're getting inspired and crafty. I um, hope you're having the nice pretty weather that we've been having. It's been sunshiny, beautiful outside. We do expect some rain tomorrow, but you know, nothing grows without that rain. All right, we're gonna take our next ribbon and I just decided rather than to use just the black, I wanted to use this checked ribbon. I have some left that I got from the thrift store. And I think it looks nice with the sign. You know, the sign is black and kind of a brown and green color. I'm going to go ahead and use it. There's no sense hoarding things if we're not going to use them. I mean, I loved it enough to get it, so I may as well use it, right? Now, I'm only going to need eight of those. And this is how we're going to assemble those little stacks. You're going to make somewhat of an X pattern and then right in the middle, standing up straight, put that little check ribbon. Then just kind of walk your fingers toward each other from either side and this is what you get. Now rather than doing them all at once and putting them aside, I'm just going to go ahead here and apply them down as I get them prepared in my hand. So holding it tightly, pressing down tightly and give it a few twists. And then you can pull your little pieces apart. If you've watched any of my videos, bow making or wreath making in the past, then you know I do a lot of fluffing. So you're going to see me do a lot of that in here. Because it's important. It's really important to make your items look like you really put in some work. You know, you really put in an effort, effort to make it a high-end look. So, you know got to do those little extra steps. We don't get too big of a rush. Make sure you make it pretty. So the same thing here. I'm twisting it really tight. 
and then kind of fluffing out my tails to see how I want them to look. And I like this. I think this looks pretty good. Now I'm fluffing them outward, but I will be pulling them off to the side somewhat when we put down that sign in the middle. I've gotten some new subscribers over the past month, and I'm very grateful for you. I want to give you a nice warm welcome. And for you who have been here from the beginning, I appreciate you so very much. I really do. I try to get to those comments and give you little hearts and, and comment and talk to you because it's important to me that we get to know each other. I want you to feel comfortable here. I want you to want to come back for more. And with that said, if you're enjoying the videos, I would very much appreciate if you could share it with somebody who you think might like it and giving it a thumbs up and commenting, all those things really help my channel and it is very appreciated by me. So once you get all the way down to the bottom, you've got all of those covered, you can start to fluff out. Now I'm just kind of fluffing them, pulling them around, twisting them around. They're not glued in place, so you can move them around. And I'm gonna do the same thing with those loops that are underneath. They can help support your bow, so you can put that, that loop in the back, pull your bow over the top, and then try to just focus most of your attention on pulling those things to the outside. You can see what I've done here, how you can see a space in the middle. That's going to be okay. You will not see that once we get our sign there. So we're going to kind of arrange this. I'm going to pull it all out to the side and make it look nice and fluffy and pretty. It always makes a difference, just like with a Christmas tree. You pull it straight out of the box, it's flat and looks kind of sad, but once you get it fluffed out, you can see it in all of its glory. So we won't need these little cleaners, pipe cleaners anymore. You can go and just trim those down. And then this is how it's gonna look so far. So there's a company I've worked with before. They're called HTV Runt and they sell crafting supplies at a great value. They're having a spring sale right now across four platforms and they're gonna be doing a giveaway. It's from March 16th to April the 2nd. I'm gonna have the links for you down below in the description box. Y'all, they even sell stuff on Amazon and Walmart so you can find them just about anywhere. Look at all the stuff that they sent me. I've got vinyl, I've got transfer tape, sublimation paper, a wax making kit. This is just a small sample of what they offer all the time. So be sure that you go and check them out and get you some goodies. All right, so this is a very easy way to attach your signs down to your projects without having to put glue all over your projects. We're just gonna have glue on this sign and not even on that wreath at all. Just put a little hot glue down Put your pipe cleaner down, a little more hot glue, and then a piece of paper, and that's going to hold it down, lock it in place. Once it is cool to the touch, because you don't want to pull anything loose, you're going to settle it down and see where you want to place it on your broom. I'm going to take my little wires and twist them downward like this, and then just push them through the bows and the loops so that I can wrap it around the actual broom handle. And that is easy to do. Once you fill it in the back, you can just flip it over and then twist it around. Now keep in mind, you don't want to twist it down too tight. Don't pull it too tight or you'll smash it. You want it to kind of appear that it's another layer and that it's floating above it. That look is just the best look in my opinion. You can certainly do it any way that you like because we like to make things personal. We like to say that there is no wrong in it, so do it however you really like it. For my personal taste, I like to give it a little breathing room. So we're gonna do that on the top and on the bottom. And then you can flip it over and pull things back out in the way that they're gonna be pretty and pleasing to your eye. Excuse my head in the video. This was a long broom, so I had to get my camera way, way above my table. So you're gonna see a lot of my head, shoulders, and shirt. Okay, so you can see here, we had them all pulled to the side. Now we're gonna add some florals and some greenery. So I don't need all the stem or those leaves right now on these roses. I'm just gonna trim them down and then pull off whatever will pull off. I'm not gonna throw them away though because I used them in the very end of the video. 
So be sure you stay tuned so that you can see that. All right, then we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to cut down our ferns. And these ferns are really nice considering they came from Dollar Tree. They are plastic, so they're not fabric, but when ferns come out, they're kind of shiny when they're new and fresh in the woods. So I'm okay with this. And they're so thick, you can actually pull it apart just like I did and have separate pieces. I want to take one long piece and yep, I'm going to try it here. I think it looks good that way. Then I'm going to add my hot glue and go ahead and press it into the broom and right behind that frame. It's going to hold it in place nicely. I want to go ahead and continue down with a little more of that fern. Kind of I'm going to kind of get it down over a little bit of the broom just to kind of make a good transition between what we have going on up top and the bottom of the broom. Twist them around, you know, move them around, do what you think you like. I'm going to go up here to the top and I'm going to add some little off center to the side here. I'm just kind of gluing it down to the back of the sign and holding it in place. I'm going to take my rose and then feed it down right into that part. And you're going to add a little bit behind the head of the rose to hold it down, whatever you need to do. And you can certainly use any florals that you like. I just had these. They haven't been used, so I thought this would be a good project for it. I'm going to add that little tan one right next to it, or natural colored one and then continue to add here on the bottom. I think I might have had a piece or two left of the fern, but I used pretty much the entire pig. And that's not bad. I got a lot of coverage too for, you know, for just $1.25. And I'm just gonna continue along and fill out here and there, adding a little at a time till it looks kind of like I like it. And pretty much it makes a, an upside down triangle shape. All right, so I'm going to take this beautiful stuff. I don't know what it is, but I love it. I don't think it's baby's breath, but who knows? I'm going to cut this off in a variety of lengths. And then just start laying it down on top of the fern. You can put it down and hide it underneath your sign. Just get that stem right up in there. You can see it kind of locks in there. And then go ahead and just play with it a little bit and move your fern around and that beautiful, whatever that is, that other beautiful piece of greenery. And then we're going to be adding a couple of those little pieces into the centers of each of those little bundles. And you can pretty much tell, whatever ribbon color you put on top, you can tell. Just go right in there, kind of behind the sign, and it will stay nicely in place. And you know, this I made this for spring, but this is certainly an arrangement that could last you all year long. It really would. Very simple. There's nothing in here that really says that it is only springtime or any other type of year. So you could just use it anywhere. This could be hanging on your door all year long. Or you could also hang it on a wall in a narrow space that needs a little something extra. We have a lot of those walls in our house because we have a lot of windows. So we have some little short walls or narrow walls. And these types of projects always give you the perfect little touch, a little something little something extra where a wreath maybe won't fit. But you'd like something a little more than just a sign. So you can see how I've done here. You can see the process that I'm using. And I know that Dollar Tree has some, I don't know, cattails, baby breath. Um, they have all kinds of little berry picks. Something like that would also look pretty in here. Now I'm going to go down to my ribbon and I'm going to use 24 inch strips. We are going to make a funky bow. Yes, a funky bow. That's a funny, funny name for a bow, isn't it? It's an easy one, y'all. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing with this satin black ribbon. 
it is not wired either. Then I'm going to use this plaid ribbon and I'm going to use two pieces of it. So two of the burlap, one of the black, and two of this one. I'm going to fold this one over. I'm going to measure five inches up, pinch it in the middle, and then press it firmly between my thumb and forefinger. And I'm going to hold it in place. We're going to make the next one. Same process. It's going to be the same measurements and process on each one of these. But I don't want my two black and whites together, so I'm going to just separate it with my fingers until I'm ready to place it in the bow. I'm going to do my satin one here, folding it over, pinching it toward the center. It's a beautiful black. Beautiful. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And you can see that all of them are together except for the one where I'm holding it now I'm going to add it. So you see I just added that one in with the other ones and they're all being held tightly in my hand between my thumb and my pointer finger. I'm just using it like a clamp. I'm holding these all in place and now I've added my last loop and tail. So see here, got a handful of loops, right? I'm going to take a zip tie. I have white and black. I just picked up the black, no particular reason. Then I'm using that one. Before I tighten it all the way down, I'm going to check the lengths of my loops just to make sure, do a little adjusting, and then when all of them are right where I like them, I'm going to tighten that up as tight as I can get it, and use my wire cutters and trim off the tail, well the extra of the, the tie I mean, and now I'm going to work on the tails. I'm going to kind of pull them outward and kind of upward so that they're on top where the loops are, so they're not like hanging. The tails of the funky bow are not going to be hanging. They're going to kind of spread out. So you see here, kind of like an octopus, right? If an octopus had that many heads. All of those little legs are going to be out. So I'm just fluffing the bow and I'm going to twist things around and dovetail the ends. This just always, in my opinion, gives it a nicer look. But certainly you could do just a slant in your ribbon if you would like. But I wouldn't recommend leaving them just flat because if you leave them with a flat cut, they're probably going to ravel. So just go ahead and do this all the way around until each one of those tails look gorgeous. I'm going to lay it down here and trying to separate some of the tails, moving them around. Um, you know, you can twist them, twist them, give them a little tug, pull them to the side, and then you can divide up all of the colors and the patterns if you would like. I'm going to use a little floor wire here. I'm going to cut off about 12 inches of it, just because I want to be sure that I have plenty. Flip the bow over, and then try to find the closest spot next to the base of the bow and go through it with that wire. Now if you are if you have enough forethought to place a pipe cleaner in your hand before you tighten your zip tie all the way down, you can save yourself this step. But this is usually how I do it. Yeah, because I get in a hurry sometimes. Now I'm just gonna take those two pieces of wire, feed them through, flip it over. You can see one is on the side and one is through the center of the broom. Get the greenery out of the way and then just twist it down tightly so that my bow does not wiggle and shake loose. And cut it off and press those wires into that broom. And then when you pull it over, you can see that I have my bow placed off to the side. So I have my roses off to the right and my bow is giving it some weight on the bottom left. Again with the fluffing, getting the little webs off of it from the glue and then just pulling and twisting these whichever way they want to go, whichever way you want them to go. I just want to be sure that you can see my E under there. And this is how it looks. What do you think? It's different, right? It's definitely different, but I really like it. Now just for the back, take that top loop that we use, that top piece, twist it onto itself and make a little hanger for it. Now you can hang it on the wall. This is how it's gonna look. 
I absolutely love it. Of course I do. I think it's pretty. I think it's something that I can use for quite some time in my home. It can be used pretty much anywhere. Anywhere you've got that little space is going to be perfect. We're going to make a wreath. You're going to need possibly some flowers and some greenery. I got these cute little shamrock picks of two different colors from Dollar Tree. So there's a dark pick and then a pick that's light and dark. I'm going to use two of these gorgeous little scarves and a shamrock frame. I'm also going to use some of these this is a berry garland. Mine came from Christmas at Dollar Tree, but you can get it pretty much year round. I'm gonna use a variety of ribbons, both thrifted and Dollar Tree. So we're gonna start off by covering this frame and we're gonna do it with the scarf. It only takes one scarf to do this and one zip tie. So we're gonna start by just kind of bunching up the bottom and we wanna have a little piece that we can attach with the zip tie. So I'm going to go around the frame in the middle and cross the, the center section there so that it won't move around when we're putting this on and this will kind of lock it in place. So once we get it where we want it, just go ahead and cut that off. I'm just using some little cutters here but you can certainly use an old pair of scissors if you have them. I'm going to tuck that to the inside of the frame. And then rather than just wrapping this around tightly all the way around, which would cause you to have to use more than one scarf, we are going to stretch this out and get full coverage by doing it the right way. So I'm gonna start by adding a little bit of glue and taking the edge of that scarf and just wrapping it right there. Make sure that you're flipping the right side out when you do this so that you get the pretty side. You don't want your words to be backwards. So you can see I'm kind of pulling this down. I'm gonna leave it ruched slightly. I don't want to have all of the, you know, wrinkles out of it, but I wanna make sure that I am really stretching it as far as I can take it so that my $1.25 scarf will make it all the way around this entire frame. And it's a pretty big frame. It's very impressive to have gotten something like this from Dollar Tree. And of course, I should have picked up two, so that I would be certain to have one for next year because you know how it goes at Dollar Tree. When you see it, you better get it. All right, so I'm gonna continue along here and just wrap around those corners and especially around the corners and the insides of the of the wreath you want to make sure that you just add little dots of glue you don't need to make a mess just something to kind of keep it where it needs to be and you can see so far that I've got all of the scarf that I need to make it around the top part of this shamrock which was very nice so I'm just doing the same thing I did before and I wanted to leave all of this in so you could see that it does fit now I'm gonna take the second one and do the bottom part. Doesn't that look nice? I love the variety of colors there. So I'm going to now work on the bottom. I'm just seeing how much I think I'm going to need here. And it needs to be enough to go over the front and then overlap the back and attach together on the back side. So I'm just gonna fold this over so none of my raw seams are poking out. And I'm gonna cover the frame I'm gonna make sure I have about an inch and a half on the bottom so that I can overlap it and enough to cover the bottom part. So you can see here, we have a nice edge. I'm just folding this under around that. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Just kind of pulling it and rolling it over. Gives it a nice flat finish on the front. Maybe kind of messy in the back, but we're gonna fix that when we pull this piece over. I'm gonna pull it over and then glue it right down. And then of course you wanna bend up the bottom and then overlap it and kind of sandwich it in. So now the frame is complete and we're gonna work on a bow. I'm gonna use my thrifted ribbon here. 
this stuff catches on everything but it's so pretty it gives a really nice a really nice look so you can see here how I'm measuring my loops and I'm going to continue along with 12 inch loops or 12 inch pieces which are going to make six inch loops and I want to be sure that I do four of these because I almost want it to kind of give you an idea of a four leaf clover right I mean it's St. Patrick's Day don't we want a little luck of course we do so you can see there four leaves I'm gonna clip it and then I'm going to take a zip tie and zip it up originally I had a different type of second bow but don't be bothered by the one you see in the corner up there because I'm gonna change it I decided to change it so now I'm just pulling this down and I've got my four leaves now this is the bow that we're going to do to go on top and it's going to be about eight inch you're going to do eight inches and then fold it over and over so that you have two loops on each end and that will give you another bow with four loops how perfect is that and this is such an easy bow i'm going to take a piece of jute because maybe you don't have zip ties and i'm going to just give this a couple of knots in the center this is some really strong jute and i really like that so we're going to fluff that bow out and get it ready to go right across the other bow. So go on between two of the loops so that there's two on one side, two on the other. I'm going to wrap that jute around and I'm going to give it a few knots and that's going to hold it nicely in place. All right, so there we go. And then you can fluff a little bit and I want to make sure that it is going across the center and the stem part of the clover you see how I did that and that's just so our bow does not move around when we fluff it I don't want it to lose the position so it's kind of locked into place when you put it like this and you see I have very long tails on that bow that sheer bow underneath I love that that's exactly how I want it you can trim yours down if you would like and then you can trim down the little tails on the inside of the short bow just cut mine in a slant and then move things around that's the beauty of not having glue here right you can move things around and you can make that bow look however you want that's why it takes so much fluffing to make a bow look gorgeous I get a lot of comments on my bows and I really appreciate that but for those of you who lack confidence in your bow making skills just keep fluffing and I promise you're gonna come up with something beautiful so now it's time to embellish the bow, right? We're gonna add some greenery to it because, you know, rustic and cottage, you know how we do here. I'm going to just kind of look at how I want it placed before I put the glue on, and then I'll start placing it down. And I kind of want this to be a little bit wild and going around and just accentuating and really setting off my pretty bow. And by the way, if you choose to use green ribbon, you can certainly do that. Dollar Tree does have green ribbon, and maybe you have some thrifted ribbon that maybe you used for Christmas. You loved it then, you can love it now. Pull that stuff back out and use it. So just wanna put it here and there, and I'm using, you know, a variety. I'm using some of my mixed shamrocks, and I'm using some of the darker ones. And then I thought, you know what, I'd really like to add something on a smaller scale with a little more body to it. So these little picks that I also had thrifted fit perfectly into that. The coloring is great. It's kind of variegated and that looks really nice with the different colored shamrocks and it just all fits in really well together, I think. Now we're going to make some of these little twirly looking pieces. See how easy that is? You can use a pencil though, you don't have to use a chopstick. Whatever you have, and then trim it down the way you like it. And this is just gonna add, just gonna add a little magic to it. Gonna add some little flyaways to it. And kinda give it that little, you know, it just makes it a little more charming, I think. And what is St. Patrick's Day if not magical, right? So just keep adding, look at it from all sides, like I always say and from up and down and make it just like you like it. There is no right or wrong when you are making your own creations. 
Okay, so now you just see me taking a little piece of that same jute and making a little hanger for it. I'm going to put it up here in the center top and add some glue. And that's how it's going to be hung. Here is that shamrock. If you just were to hang that up on your door or on your wall, I appreciate you all so much. I love your comments. I love the relationship that we have here on this channel, encouraging one another. And on to the next project, up. we're going to use a Dollar Tree wheel wreath frame. I'm going to use some ivy and some forsythia vine. My ivy and vine, they are, are um, they were thrifted, but you can get something similar to it anywhere you do your shopping. All right, so I'm going to start by just wrapping this around. You know how ivy grows; it just grows up and around. It wraps out and around any little thing it can get attached to and I'm just gonna go in between the spokes back and forth with this fine we're gonna do something different with the forsythia but you'll see that in a minute so I'm gonna keep going around here around and around if you can't find something similar to this at Dollar Tree um, this ivy you can definitely find this and get it on uh, a sale week at Hobby Lobby and probably in the wedding section you could get this too all right, and this is just another piece. It's a different one, but I'm going to mix them together anyway. You can see that it's darker, a little bit bigger. I'm just going to put that kind of off to the side and then wind it around on the inside with the other one. It makes it look like it's intentional. You know, sometimes when foliage uh, first comes out of the ground, it turns out that it looks a little bit lighter than it actually does as it ages a bit and grows a bit. It gets a little deeper and darker. So we're gonna go with it. We're going to go with it. Now this is kind of a cottagey look and that's what I intended for this video to be. So I'm gonna play around with it. I'm gonna make it look like something that may be growing in an English garden somewhere. I'm gonna give it a little bit of freedom to do as it will and then I'll be wrapping it around so it doesn't fall off. You can use um, ties, wires, anything that you want to hold it down to further hold it down, but I found that with this, it stays right where it needs to be. I guess it depends if you have a wired stem or if you have plastic in your stem. All right, so now we're going to layer the forsythia right on top of it. At first, when I got this, I thought, you know, that looks like jasmine, and it really does. Jasmine and forsythia, are they similar are they the same thing I don't know all right so now I'm just gonna start by kind of wrapping this end around you won't be able to see that loop and then rather than wrapping this around and around because I don't want it to be thick I want it to lay flat on whatever surface I'm gonna put the forsythia just on the top you can see here that I'm winding it down in the ivy a bit and then I'm gonna use whatever types of ties or wires that I have. This particular little tie here was one that was actually holding that forsythia to the tag. So I'm using it again. I'm recycling it. You can use white, you can use black, you can use whatever color that you like. Now my wheel there, my bicycle wheel, was actually black and I spray painted it white. So I've used it several different times in several different arrangements. It's also been copper before. So, you know, you can recycle your things. You can use them over and over again. So just go around here, all the way around. And you can make it as thick or thin as you like, depending on how much you have um, in your vine. This is another thing, you know, you can pick up these vines at um, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, any craft stores. Just watch your sales. Lots of stores have sales. And if you want to save your money and stretch it a little bit further, maybe you don't have a good thrift store, then just be sure that you watch your sale cycles in your craft stores. And you can often get things at 50% off and you can buy off season and put it back for next year if you've got space to store it. So you can see here, I've just used floral wire this time and I'm attaching it down to the ivy and the spokes underneath or the wire underneath. Now, I don't want mine to be any thicker than it is, so I'm just going to cut it off here when we get back to the front. You can see this little loop is where we started, and I'm going to just loop it right through there. And you won't even be able to see it once I move my ivy around. 
It's such a simple little wreath, but to me it makes a, a nice impact. You got the bright yellow and the beautiful rich greens. It just looks like spring to me. So now I'm going to move all of these around and make sure that I'm not looking at the plastic backs of anything. I want to move everything forward as much as I can. And if you have a problem and you can't get things to lay the way they that you want them to lay, just grab a little hot glue. You see I'm going to cover the ring here with an extra leaf and I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue to put another piece right over where I've got too much of this wheel showing through. Simple. It doesn't take a lot of hot glue and then it'll peel off easily when you get ready to use this for something else. So once I get it the way I like it, I'm going to embellish it. This is a sign that I got from Dollar Tree. This wasn't in the spring though, it was over in the home decor. Um, and I have found quite a few of these in my store, so hopefully you can find these in yours. To make it stick down, I'm going to use a pipe cleaner and a piece of paper and my hot glue gun. Be careful, protect your fingers. I'm gonna flip it over once it is dried and then twist it right into the center. I like the placement of this. I'll be able to see my home sign nicely and I think that the black and the yellow and green look so pretty together. Now to cover that, just to make sure nothing scratches, if you wanna put it on the wall or your door, you can put another piece of paper on top and that'll give it a little bumper. So I don't like the way this looks. It's not glued on there right. You know how it is at Dollar Tree, sometimes things just, they just don't sit right. So I'm just gonna pull it off and I'm gonna reshape it and then place it back down. And to me that made such a difference, such a difference. Whoops. Okay. Now that it's nice and full and pretty and shaped more like an O, I'm gonna embellish it. I just decided that maybe I would add a couple of more of those pretty little flowers right down on top of it. I love to see that people are enjoying what I'm doing, that I'm inspiring people. I love it. And if you have not subscribed and you're a viewer, I wish you would. I really wish you would consider it. I'm always going to do my best to bring you unique pieces. I'm not copycatting. Um, I'm gonna try to bring you thrift flips and Dollar Tree and discount DIYs. We're gonna recycle things. Yeah, I'd love to have you as part of the YouTube family. Now I'm just gonna add some of that ivy because I think that gives it a little extra oomph. What do you think? Yep, I like it like that. This is so simple. And you don't have to put any type of hanger on there. You can just hang it right from the frame. These are my cottage spring creations. They were inspired by the pansies that I found at Dollar Tree. I hope you try these. What you do is good enough. You are good enough. I hope you're having some beautiful spring weather. I know that I have been. I appreciate you all so much, and I'll be back soon. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.